<laughs> YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we've got here, the NX-8 along with an Eros Edge 540. This thing looks really good. We are super, super excited to bring this to you. It has the vector system in it and we're running it on a 620, a very basic receiver that's gonna give us standard functions but then we're gonna have vector for stabilization. So this thing is super exciting. Can't wait to show you. So without further ado, beautiful wood prop. Assembly went super smooth. Stay tuned for the unbox build and radio setup. Look at the throws on this thing. Just absolutely huge. Okay, here we go. This thing is a powerhouse, so I'm hoping it's not too insane. But here we go, here goes nothing. Oh my goodness, that thing is nuts. Might need just a touch extra expo, but look at this. We're already hovering with the thing. That is just amazing. Camera crew, are you ready for a... Oh, look at this upside down, just minding my own business. That's uh, about 50% throttle. That is crazy. That's 50% throttle, folks. That's amazing. Look, I'm doing one-handed flying here. This is just nuts. There's 100% throttle. It's like it respects no boundaries of gravity. Okay, so I am just gonna cruise along here. I'm just dri just drifting along using the rudder. That thing is just rock solid right it now is. too, look at it. Yeah. It's beautiful. I feel like we're maybe, we could probably go a little bit more tail heavy too. I think I found the stall point there. So let's try some sport flying here. I'm gonna go into my high rate or my highest expo mode and it should kind of tame, oh yeah, tamed it right down, look at that. No more porpoising, just relaxing, easy flying. I can still get in there and do crazy stuff. This is about 75% rates with 20% expo on all three axes. I think our CG might be just a, just a hair too, too forward. But then I say that and I think, gosh, if it gets too much more insane, the elevator's gonna get even more nutty. Let's go two steps to the right. There we go. The roll rate's really good. Now you guys already kind of know this from watching my channel forever, but we have never done an Eros brand plane and we are so super impressed. Hey, let's go over into the bowl and let's show them some just sport flying here. I must say the angle of attack is required to be for real slow flight performance, you gotta kinda keep that angle of attack up a little bit, but it's still very controllable, and I'm in my, I'm in my super tame setting right now. Okay, I gotta try something. We're going to our insane setting, which is no expo and full rates. Oh my goodness, that is just miraculously awesome. I can't believe how good the stabilizer's working on this. Guys, I'm not a 3D pilot, let's get real. Here we go, we'll just show you how it glides. Oh, I know what's going on. I just needed a couple clicks of trim on my elevator. Hmm. That's the full roll rate that I can get it to do without adding any, uh, any mixing with the rudder for coordination. <laughs> so cool. You know what else? You know what else you could do on this plane if you wanted to make it more of a 3D extravaganza is you could uh, put a lower pitch prop on it because I feel like the pitch on this prop creates a lot of speed that you don't really need on this plane for your 3D performance. And that would get you out of the hole a little quicker too. But man, that thing looks so good, that wood prop. I think it's well tuned. That vector works better than I expected. Okay, so we're gonna try some 
We're gonna try putting it in, okay, here we go. We're gonna go into like auto leveling right now. Oh, that is so wow. good. It actually works. It's a little bit pitchy on the way back to level. That's not uncommon. Even with safe on uh, spectrum equipment, we seem to find that. That's about 50% stick input, a little bit of coordination with the rudder just to bring it around. Boy, in, in the auto leveling, what did they call it? They called it three different things. Um, Look at this, out of the throttle all together. Look how nice and solid that is. I think this would be considered like stability mode. Yeah, right. So now can I roll it upside down? Mm, trying and it won't let me, but that's pretty, that's a huge limit. Look at that limit guys, that's the down. That's the up. Oh, I'm trying to trick it into flipping. Yes, I tricked it. <laughs> okay, coming out of the stabilization and uh, I don't know that we're gonna do no stabilization just because these things tend to be kind of insane. So what I'll do is I'll go into my highest rate of Expo, meaning my most tame controls. I wanna throw a little extra Expo on the elevator too. Oh, did you see those birds? Yeah. I about flew through them, that's nuts. I didn't see them until I was about in them. Look how nice and solid that thing looks. Love it's the just, colors. Yeah, it looks great right now in the fall. It pops against the trees. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's one of our first like cool mornings. I could tell. Oh, you meant them. Yeah, I meant them. <laughs> but guys, look at this. It's not like I'm cruising around at 100 miles an hour. No. I'm just barely kicking it up there. Inverted performance. A little cornhole action for you. And then safe-ish. That is so nice, guys, being able to just click into safe. That's the deal breaker for most of you, getting up there doing crazy stuff. Let's see if I can do a flat spin here. I always seem to mix up what direction I need to do it. Oh, that's so cool. And then safe. Oh, that is so nice. For you beginners out there, I gotta say this, I don't ever recommend a 3D plane for beginners. And I don't think, honestly, I can say that this one is a ton better. I would say that it's probably, you still better be pretty experienced if you expect to fly this way, but I'm gonna caveat it, just like I did the 300 Extra from Horizon. You can, you can fly this as a first, if you've got experience on a simulator and you kick your Expo way up and your rate's way down, you can totally fly this thing. But I wouldn't do it as a first plane. I don't think you're gonna enjoy it. I think you're gonna end up crashing it a little bit too quick. I'd recommend doing this as your second or third plane. I'm just noticing a little tendency to travel. You see that, how it's kicking to the, trying to get my trim worked out in the flat flight. Two clicks of trim on the elevator, down. Just gliding, looks pretty straight. Going forward, one click down trim. I gotta say, this thing has such huge control surfaces that when you make a click on trim, I think what happens is you just sort of find the middle ground and you're just kind of a little bit overshooty on the one direction or a little bit overshooty on the other, but look how sweet that thing looks. So controllable, so easy to go in and make a commitment to a maneuver. It's just not hard at all to fly this thing. And to be honest, I know that I have advanced in my skills over the years and many of you have done the same, but in terms of a beginner pilot, getting into something that's 3D, you know, like a second or third plane, there's no reason you couldn't pull this off, folks. And you can really hold down your receiver cost if you do the vector system. These planes, we had no idea what we were missing until just this weekend when we did our first unbox build radio setup. And I'm telling you, Eros has got some good stuff. So we are so excited to be entering into a working relationship with Eros. So we're really excited on that and hobbyzone.com. So definitely follow the links in the description below. Obviously we are affiliated with them. We're gonna get small commission if you guys buy these planes. So when we get in front of you on YouTube and you think, well, you just want the commission. Well, let me tell you something. I can 
tell you to buy this or I can tell you to buy the 300 extra and I don't care which one you buy, but I think this one is pretty stinking good. Oh, you hear the beeper? I'm on a 2700 4S 30C Smart Pack Gen 1. So I do have a balance lead and yes, that was a beeper alarm. My cheap voltage alarm is kind of garbage. It does not work well and they're about three bucks for whatever reason, I haven't decided to replace it. Hey, grass ops, isn't that about the way we crashed the last point we landed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We aren't gonna end on that folks because I have another thing I wanted to show you, but I wanted you to see wheels up, wheels down. So in the unbox build radio setup, you may notice, you may remember this. You haven't seen it yet, but you may remember this. Okay, I'm gonna go into the average mode. <laughs> so cool guys. Okay, so that is what we call low voltage. We have enough to get back, so we're gonna do that right now. Just uh, preserving energy with the rudder. I got plenty to get back, no problem. <laughs> oh man, that is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna go into my uh, not insane mode, and I'm gonna see if we can do that better before we lose our pack. We're gonna do a dead stick landing on purpose. Look at this guys, that's 100% throttle. You can hear the pitch change, that means we're gonna lose power. Remember, no flaps, folks. So what do you do when you have no flaps? You use up energy. Well, how are you gonna use up energy on that plane? You don't have any flaps, Brian. Well, you don't wanna come in that steep. You know what you do? You preserve your energy. You use a little burst here and there. You get yourself down, you follow a little corkscrew method and then you just bring it in nice and gentle and ease the throttle. Woo, woo, woo. Guys, I felt like I was gonna get a better landing for you on this one. Throttle cuts on. Let's talk about Expo for just two seconds before we continue. I'm gonna go into dual rates and Expo. This is the high setting I was using. They're all three control axis are the same, okay? So I'm gonna go to my normal elevator setting. So like my number two setting, and I'm gonna kick this up to like 25. I'm gonna kick this up to like 35. Everything else felt amazing and I had no, well, that's, I felt like maybe, you know what? Servo setup, excuse me, dual rates and expo. We're gonna go to rudder and I'm gonna kick that up for like landings. I'll just go way high. And then for regular flight mode, we'll do like 25. And then we still have our insane mode, a little bit extra expo on rudder. And we drop the rates way down for landing. Cause like you really don't need that much rudder. In fact, I'm probably gonna get more like this. This would be more like sport flying. Okay, so do you guys wanna push the envelope and go around for one more turn? Camera crew just shook her head at me. So that is my cue to take off. <laughs> Let's see, if it doesn't take off, then she wins. As you know, here on Brian Phillips RC, we push the limits of our batteries so that you don't have to. Okay, so we are not gonna have enough juice. Oh, you know what that is? That's our ESC kicking down to 60%. So our ESC is trying to save our plane's life. Cam crew, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just coming in here for a nice, gentle, relaxing, no problems at all landing. It's gonna be beautiful and everybody's gonna love it. And just to be clear, I didn't even put it in my landing mode. <laughs> that was the whole purpose of my landing that. mode. Okay, so in closing, throttle cuts on and tested. Guys, this plane is awesome. I am so super impressed with arrows on our first go around with them. Yeah. Um, we had no idea what to expect. We sort of expected a mix between, you know, like um, XK and Isheen and somewhere into the realm of Dynam maybe a little better to build, but boy, I was so impressed. The packaging was every bit as good as the big ones. The build was every bit as good as the big ones. We did have a little bit of trouble lining up the screws on this, but all we had to do was get the front hole and then force the back, and then that was super easy. We just levered it back and it worked great then. And it was like a- And this is a mid-wing design. So when you have the mid-wing design, they interlace. So anyway, you'll see if you watch the video, evidently this black, Canopy is supposed to maybe like bend a little bit if you leave it in the hot sun. So just be aware of that. 
I don't really think that's gonna be a big problem for us. But you can see where I've got my pack. I feel like you could probably pull that back a little bit. If you're doing high 3D maneuvering, bring it back here. Now, like I said, this thing doesn't really work. We should just throw the XBC battery checker on there. We could run inside and do that. Yeah, let's do that before we wrap things up, guys. All right, guys. So we're just gonna plug in the XBC battery checker. All right, here it is. 5% left. <laughs> oh, you could have gone around again. Uh, into the <laughs> ground. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, so here's, here's what we're asking. Eros is a new brand for us. Excuse all the airplanes. I'm sure you guys are probably jealous of the scenario we have set up in our kitchen. Um, but most of you need to have a home to come to, <laughs> which I go to bed. So anyway, yes, this plane is good. We are very happy with the way things went. We're hoping this isn't like a nuance and we're gonna find out that all the rest of the arrows are not the same because after having talked them up like that, I just really am super impressed. Mm -hmm. And we honestly didn't know what to expect. Um, forgive any malfeasance on the flight performance because I am not a 3D pilot. So we, of course we started with a plane that's not in my area of expertise in my opinion, um, but I love this plane. We have reviewed the extra 300, super similar plane and um, I don't want to take anything away from either of these two planes. I think they're both great, but I think this plane is something new, exciting. I love the colors. I love the power. I love the wood prop and I love the way it went together. But also furthermore, I love the idea that this is from Eros. And so we've got, you know, like an alternative, which is nice. So anyway, that being said, check the video description below. You can buy these help support our channel, and you'll be helping us to build clout with these different manufacturers, which ultimately brings more planes to you on Brian Phillips RC, which is what we know you really want because you come back, world's best audience in YouTube history. Thank you. Stay tuned, more coming. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this. We've got the Arrows Edge 540. Oh boy, that thing is pretty. This thing has the vector stabilization and auto leveling system. We currently have it outfit with an AR620, a regular kind of plain Jane receiver. The Vector does all the stabilization just to kind of hold down cost on the planes. You can do that. And look at these gigantic, oh, first, before we lay it down, matte finish on the cone, mm -hmm. wood prop, absolutely gorgeous. This is gonna be our second flight with this. It's a little bit windier. And I just want to show you, look how huge the surfaces are. It's crazy. We've been super impressed with this plane. The auto leveling and stabilization are great. We have three modes of action on our dual rates and expo. We have crazy 3D flight, which is basically no expo. Then we set up different for aileron, elevator, and rudder. See how it's different? And then our highest, same thing, a little bit more on rudder. And that's kind of like a landing setting. We don't ordinarily do that, but just wanted to remind you on what we had done. Okay, so full up elevator. I'll show you, you can get in the, you can get in the air. We're gonna go out in the sun. Then go to the left, please. There you go, right there. You good? Mm -hmm. You can get in the air quick. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit it's a little bit windy right now i just want to let you know you can get it in the air uh, phenomenally quick and uh, in terms of flight performance we were super impressed with it the other day it was really calm and super super easy because of the calmness we wanted to see how this did with some extra wind behind it boy it looks good doesn't it still mm -hmm. love the colors yep. folks orange is great So this is about 50% throttle. There's our full roll rate. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of upside down flight performance. It's nice and tame. I'm giving about 5% up stick pressure and it's gaining altitude. Okay, so let's go full throttle. Inside loop. Here. That full elevator will just make it stand on its end. Okay, so speaking of standing on its end, out of the throttle, 
we've got that battery pushed all the way to the firewall. 2700 4S Smart Pack, kind of a weird size. We're gonna try this on 2200 4S. <laughs> so you can get it really to go fast. So there's auto leveling guys, out of the throttle, full rudder, and then let go. And look at that, so cool. Okay, we're in auto leveling. The vector's doing all the flying. I'm gonna give it some rudder, see? I'm gonna roll it, limited bank angles. Look at this, no throttle and it's flying itself essentially, okay? I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna do this landing with just the vector. Get a little bit of throttle just to make sure we don't run into a problem with the tree line here. Okay, I'm flying it right now, full disclosure. Okay, here we go, just gonna bring it in. Just kind of pointing the nose up a little bit to slow it down, kind of tipping it a little bit here and there. There you go, guys. That was basically a vector landing. All I did was just a little bit of this, just to kind of, you know, keep it generally going in the right direction. And you'll note I hit the grass. I wasn't really trying to over, over control it. Okay, so now then there's no stabilization, which is insane. And then stabilization. The, the insane, meaning because it's windy and this is a 3D plane. Now, we're gonna go into our tame mode where we've really got everything kicked up and I'm gonna show you how nice and tame this thing can fly. That's 50% throttle. So I'm just gonna just do a couple of sport loops. And when I say sport loops, I mean like not aerobatic 3D flying, but just kind of flying around, enjoying, enjoying the scenery. Ah, oh, dang it, <laughs> it slipped out. The sink can fly so fast if you want it to. Are you trying to like? <laughs> it is definitely more tame like this, by the way. And it's, and it's enjoyable. You know, I'm more of a sport flyer than a 3D flyer. I mean, I can do the 3D stuff, but I'm not crazy about it. Okay, so just, uh, I just love the, the wide flight envelope too. And when I say wide flight envelope, what I mean is we can pretty much do whatever we want and we've got a slow speed that's very slow and a fast speed that's very fast. I wanted to take a right hand turn, so I did the, <laughs> I did the local route there. By the way, folks, keep a little air over your control surfaces. So if you're doing 3D stuff, keep that prop spinning, even if you don't want to move forward and you can do it. This vector makes you look like a genius, I can tell you that. That pilot's probably feeling a little sick right now. <laughs> okay, I wanna try if I can get a flat spin going. Okay. And then full recovery without auto leveling. Let's go back up. Okay, we're gonna try another, Eight, another flat spin. Six, five, oh, I did kind of the same one. Okay, we'll try this one again. One. Okay, we'll try it this direction. See, it's upright this time. And yes, you can, you can get it to flat spin in different ways. And I've always been super excited about flat spins because I feel like it's so, it's so seemingly out of control, and yet it's really not. It's just so cool. And then auto leveling. And I know some of you are like, we'll just bring it down the runway upside down and drag the tip on the ground. Yeah, I'm not that good a pilot, guys. What are you talking about? Your timer did elapse though. Oh, it did? It did. Okay, I should probably respect the timer because we do not have uh, full range telemetry on this. We do have some telemetry, but it's like unusually unnecessary on the 620. It doesn't really do us any good in my opinion. Okay, let's see if we can get a nice landing. Oh, shoot. I wanna, I wanna put on my landing mode. Sorry, guys. Okay, landing mode is on. I had to give a couple of clicks of trim on the elevator. I felt like I was diving a little bit every time I gave throttle. 
about 10% throttle there just to slow it down. And then I'm gonna go in the bowl, just kind of getting my sea legs under me, whatever the heck that means. <laughs> getting away from the uh, viper killing zone or excuse me, the vampire killing zone here. I wanna see what kind of high alpha we can get out of it. I know I gotta land, I know I gotta land, don't remind me. I'm gonna go in the bowl, get my altitude low, and then I'm just gonna bring it in nice and level. Nice grass landing. That wasn't intentional grass landing, by the way. Hey, let's try a grass takeoff. Let's try a grass takeoff. Ooh, that Ooh. bump looks scary. Yeah. I, I'm a little bit tight on clearance. If yeah. you'll throttle cuts on, a little bit tight on clearance there, you might say. That yeah, yeah three, let's three quarters of an inch, probably a little bit too much. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we'll just take off from here again because I want to see if I can uh, bring it in for a better landing. Okay, so throttle cuts off. Nice, gentle approach there. Of course, we're in our least insane setting, which would be the most expo and the lower rates. And yet she still looks like she's going 150 miles an hour. I can assure you guys, it's not as hard to fly as it looks like it might be. But at the same time, probably not a first plane, probably more like a second or third. Trying to do some, some... there we go, much better. You guys may have noticed on our first landings, we ended up uh, coming in and giving a lot of rudder chatter. Beautiful takeoff. Absolutely looks gorgeous. I'm just really not wanting to quit. I do have a voltage alarm plugged in, but my voltage alarm is just a, just a crappy beeper. But I feel like it's not beeped yet. I haven't heard anything, Megan. Have you? Okay, no. Okay, so I'm gonna do some uh, slipping here on the way in, which looks dangerous, like, dangerously like a knife edge. That's what all approaches look like. <laughs> I always hope my plane is mostly sideways when we're landing. Yeah, like, like hey. Yeah. It just keeps going, guys. It just keeps going. So one thing too that's different about this plane than other 3D planes we've flown in the past is it is in the uh, 1300 millimeter range for size. And that is a really good size because it's not so big that you can't transport the thing. Also, the nature of this plane is such that it just, it just really does kind of fit nicely in your car or your truck. You can put it between your seats. It's pretty, it's pretty tough. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like the toughest foam ever, but it's definitely not the weakest by any stretch. Now, you may have noticed I kind of slammed it to the ground there. That was intentional. I was trying to do what's called a slip at the end there, and I was trying to slip it in and it did work. I was in ground effect when I did it too, which is very weird. Okay, so a slip is where you kind of, instead of, just crabbing, you use the rudder to slow you down. So instead of flaps, see, and I didn't get out of it quick enough, but basically I ride the rudder and then I counter it with some ailerons, okay? And then as you get close, you can cut out of it. So instead of coming in like this and crabbing the wind where you point into the wind and you continue to fly down this straight path and then you kick at the last second, what you do is you do both axis. You do roll and this and so that's a slip and the slip is going to basically uh use up a lot of energy there's a grass takeoff for you oh we beeping yep okay yep okay here we go so we'll try slipping again you see i'm using the rudder to kind of lift the nose and then i'm cross controlling it maybe not the best maybe not the best type of model for a slip but the thing is, if you don't have flaps, you can do that. It's not beeping. It beeped when you took off. It was, okay. Wait there it off. is. 
So under heavy loading, we're beeping. So as you can see, it's not, not like an especially challenging plane to fly or land, but it's also not gonna be for us the easiest either. Okay, now, you hear that noise? That's a low voltage cutoff. So it goes from 100% down to about 60. Now, the best thing you could do if you ever have a low voltage cutoff is obviously landed five minutes ago. But in our case, you've got a get out of jail free card because let's just show the people, even with the low voltage cutoff, I can still take off. Look at this. Guys, this is what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We show you what they do so you don't have to. Look at this. Even with the low voltage cutoff, that is a dead stick, essentially. There you go. Throttle cuts on. So, in closing, seven minutes, 33 past, five. So what is that like? Let's call it- 12 and a half. Yeah, 12 and I would say, tw probably, probably more like 11, because we were down talking a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. We were on Not the ground. Much. Not a lot. Nope. But let, anyway, let's go out in the sun so they can see what's going on. Um, not on here. I'll show you inside. Yeah. Okay, so let's look where the battery is. So this is a voltage alarm. We used to use these back in the day a lot. 13.2, 3.33, 3.27, Now you can press this little button here and it will actually change it will change your voltages, but it's annoying to listen to that beep. Do you have the XBC battery checker in your pocket, I camera crew? I do this pocket. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try this out. By the way, uh, this is gonna be kind of hard to see. Can you? Oh, one percent. Yep. Hey, that's a pretty good reading. So if you fly, just to be clear, if you fly a 4S pack down to 3.3 on a plane like this, a prop-driven plane high energy consumption where you can fly at 30% throttle, like all up, get in the air, fly scale, land, and at 100% you're hovering, okay? You have a huge margin where your battery could be dead, okay? But as a new pilot, you're gonna tend to fly with a lot of throttle all the time because you're scared. And as you get to be a little bit better pilot, and I'm still getting there, you can fly with more throttle and reserve. And so, same is true in a lot of aspects of aviation is that um, when you talk about margins, margins, safety margins, whether it be altitude margins, you know, how many mistakes high do you wanna fly? How much wind can you tolerate given the speed your plane can go? Um, margins like, uh, do I have a lot of drag on the runway because it's wet? What time, you know, there's so many different measures of these safety margins that you want. And so generally the rule of thumb is if you wanna have good success with your batteries and with your airplanes and you don't wanna lose them because of a dead battery, you wanna to fly till about 3.3 would be about the minimum on a plane that's prop driven, okay? So that's why the XBC says 1% left because we're just over on a few and we're just under on a few. Now that thing is kind of junky. If you ever plug in your batteries backward on here, that's why I have the minus and the plus here. You can see this thing has lived a rough life. It's been through many crashes. There's a plus pin and a minus pin. This does up to 8S, so it's got nine pins. So in this case, we only use the first four pins or so. Yes, you can plug it in backward. And if you plug it in backward, I believe that's what ultimately kills these things because it knocks out the diodes that are in the circuit. So, and with the, big, with the bigger batteries. So if you use like a 1S, you plug it in backward, I don't think it's probably gonna hurt it. But I know my buddy Esteban, he kills like about every one of these he gets and then they just don't work. And I, they, they, they work, but they don't work right. And so it, it throws off the circuitry or something. But uh, that's what I found at least. I don't know if you guys have had the same experience. These things are real cheap. I've, we've linked to them for years on and off, but it's gotten to the point where the XBC battery checker has just been so effective. And we have so much better telemetry on most of these planes anymore. We've kind of gotten away from these. Mm -hmm. But that being said, you'll note that we're flying a Gen 1 smart pack. That's because we want the balance lead so we can run this. So if you have a plane that doesn't have telemetry, these little things are really handy and they're cheap. It's cheap insurance. There's no reason you shouldn't have a couple of them in your tool bag. 
um, I think you can get a couple for like around 10 bucks. So they're really inexpensive. And the cheaper you get, I haven't had a big problem with the cheap ones. I haven't had a, a better success with the more expensive ones. They all run about, let's call it two and a half if you buy a bunch of them to about five and a half on the more expensive end or maybe 10 if you really get, you know, the really name brandy stuff. Um, but we, we haven't really had any problems with any of them. The more expensive ones work fine. The, the cheap ones work fine. Yeah. They all die. So they all eventually start giving you bad readings on one of the cells. And that's incidentally, that's incidentally why some of the cheaper chargers will eventually fail is because the circuitry is poorly designed with smaller components and smaller components with smaller wires attached and crappier crimps and crappier solder joints. And the next thing you know, you've got a piece of hunk of garbage that you can throw away. Or you can keep charging them wrong for a long time and have problems with batteries. Yeah. So anyway, that's part of the reason why we have uh, largely gone to the smart packs. So anyway, uh, Edge 540, love the plane. Really cool plane, striking in the sky, does everything you want it to do. Obviously, I don't really do it justice as a, you know, a, a pseudo non-3D pilot here. Um, like I said, I can fly the plane. I can kind of get it to do some of the tricks but I am not a 3D pilot, let's get real guys. So if you're wanting to see um, more intense 3D performance, look in the video description below, click the link, buy one for yourself, get that thing on your front doorstep from FedEx or UPS or whoever it is you, you use for your shipping. But this thing is really good. And by the way, super, super impressed with Eros. This is our first go around with Eros. We're starting to work with them and really, we were kind of concerned that we might end up with like another Dynam and oh my goodness, could we have been further from Not the truth? All. I think yeah. we ended up with another FMS or Horizon. Mm -hmm. So kudos to Eros, great quality product. Um, all the servos are second to none. Build quality was good. Um, obviously we're gonna show that next. So just stay tuned for the unbox build and radio setup like we always do. Um, using a cheaper receiver is kind of nice. I like being able to use the AR, uh, you know, 631 or 630 in a plane like this, if you decide not to go with the vector, then you can set up flap rounds if you want. But to be perfectly frank, like this plane doesn't really need flap rounds. Um, my guess is what had happened is the flight performance is gonna just get so dang wonky that you're not gonna use it anyway. So you're gonna come in here and it's just gonna be like wonky as wonk gets. This plane is so easy to land that you really just don't need it. And it's kind of windy right now. Mm -hmm. So love it. We're gonna do one more flight for you on 2200 4S. And we're gonna see if we can get this thing a little bit more tail heavy. Meaning we're gonna ride it all the way to the firewall, but it's a smaller pack. So we're gonna counterbalance the plane more um, with a 2700 than we would with a 2200. So we'll be right back when we get reset. YouTube, it's still brand new. Let's look at this. We got the Edge 540 again, 2200. 4S. This one's a little thicker pack, so we're gonna bring it just to this bulkhead. But the center of gravity is gonna be uh, markedly more tail heavy on this because we were using a 2700 before, and uh, so it's a little bit bigger pack. So we're gonna see how this does. Startle cuts off. I did turn up my Expo in the middle setting um, on elevator to 40 and still rates at 140 on rudder, which is up a little bit. Then in my relaxing setting for landing, I put the elevator expo up to 65 and rudder to 75. So it's actually quite high, just to see if we get this thing to be super tame for us. Throttle cuts off, all the final control surfaces are tested and we're in our middle setting. So we're gonna go out here. Oh man. And you good? Yep. That's one way to take off. It is. Feels pretty solid. I can't help but feel like I got a little teeny bit of roll tendency right now. I'm gonna try to correct that and a little bit of up elevator tendency. Very strange. Or maybe that's yaw from the rudder. Okay, seems mostly straight. Sorry there, camera crew. Feels pretty good now. Nice and level, even upside down, look at this. It's like, that's hands off the sticks. It's just operates in a different realm 
where gravity doesn't exist. The 2200 makes it super light on its feet, guys. It's so weird. And it is definitely not calm no. right now. I don't know if you guys can hear from the wind. But then look how controllable and easy it is to fly though. Let's see if we can do a landing in this crazy wind. We're in kind of like our moderate mode, like the middle mode for Expo. That is awesome, guys. <laughs> see, you don't need flaps on a 3D plane like this. All right, we're gonna go into the real relaxed mode here, which means lots of Expo. And 75% rates to boot. Oh yeah, feels like a sport flyer now. Just super relaxing, real easy to fly, easy to make it do things that you would expect a more conventional plane to do. Got to really put that stick input in there to make it execute maneuvers. But it just flies more like what you would say the V1200 would fly. Curious how the landing would go though. Yeah, it might be a little bit spongy for landing is the problem. Now, I thought I heard a beep just then. I thought then. I did too. Sometimes you'll over draw the battery. Now, my only concern with my Extreme Expo is it's gonna be harder to kick in a uh, slip and then it's gonna mm. kind of be allowed to get away from you. Especially with this little bit of wind probably. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the more conventional we'll full up elevator. We'll do a grass takeoff and landing here. As you can see, absolutely no problem. Is that the way everybody does takeoffs? I would assume they do with this plane. We'll just bring it around, see if we can <laughs> land it here. Woo, 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 woo. Try to get some slip in there. There we go. That was a super skilled looking landing. <laughs> Beautiful, guys. Oh, goodness. I don't know how the camera crew does this. It's hard to film planes in general, but the 3D planes and helicopters are just nuts. And I'm trying to zoom so it's not just a little teeny speck. Yeah. It looks so good with that orange, though. Yeah, I love the I orange. Love the way it looks. The contrast against this fall color backdrop is just perfect. Yep. Oh, that was a wing drag and no, it was not on purpose. <laughs> it was an accident. I'm just going to do an inspection. Did you hear the, did you hear the uh, horizontal stabilizer hit? Oh, no. That was the noise you heard. I was banging. I think it was the tail or the horizontal stabilizer that ultimately ended up. That spins pretty fast. It does. That was about 30% input on rudder. Well, oh, that's definitely a beep. I want to try getting this thing more tail heavy. Let's go ahead and land. We'll put that battery back all the way. I just want to see how it responds. Because I'd really like to be able to get this thing into a more insane level of 3D, but still be controllable. Not the smoothest landing we've ever had. All right, so throttle cuts on. Guys, still super impressed with this Edge 540. Um, I think it's a great, oh boy, I done did it. Oh no. That might've been what I hit, guys. Dang, that's such a bummer. Uh, definitely hit something, guys. That's too bad, we're gonna fly it anyway. Not recommended. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I wanna get this battery back further. We're gonna have to replace that prop, obviously. Do you wanna check your voltage or just go with the alarm? Um, I'm just gonna go with the alarm. Okay. We're just gonna throw caution to the wind. Okay guys, so obviously if you hit a wood prop on the ground, it's gonna break. I probably hit that thing on the ground. Oh yeah, she's tooting. <laughs> you can definitely hear the imbalance. Obviously the best thing you could do right now is land. <laughs> Yeah, that's 50% throttle and you can definitely hear it. In terms of flight performance, it feels fine. Still tons of power. A little easier on the hammerhead sort of stuff. But I just feel like with that prop in its diminished state, I must have done that on the last one because I didn't hear that noise before. 
Dang, what a bummer, guys. Well, we know how to break it now. So let's go ahead and put it down. Just getting into the final. A little bit of throttle just to bring it in nice and gentle. We'll show you, even in the high winds, you can still put this thing nicely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can definitely hear, hear a difference <laughs> in noise. <laughs> okay, well, there you have it, guys. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's broken on both sides. Yep. Goodness gracious, we killed it. That is one way to do it. So anyway, in closing, I think what we've all learned, wow, that was weird. I don't remember unhooking what? that, if you can hold oh. that for me. Mm -hmm. In closing, if you're gonna push the envelope, you may eventually find the edge of the envelope where you have an accident like this. Um, the flights we've had in this plane so far have been amazing. Really, really impressed with this plane. Love the way it flies, love the way it lands. Uh, definitely just kind of a, a work in progress on trying to kind of get the expo balanced out nicely. Uh, if you do hit a wood prop on the ground, it'll break like this. By the way, I don't know if we, we may not have mentioned it in the video because we literally didn't notice it until the video was done. Uh, but we also broke the prop on the P47. Mm -hmm. I haven't broke a prop for forever. A long time. So I don't know what it is, but I think it's just when you're dealing with planes that have wood props that are a little bit easier to break, then if you were to hit a plastic prop on the ground, you'd probably just mar the finish of the prop and you might kind of curl the edge a little bit. So a couple different things we can do to resolve this, obviously order a new prop and or get a different prop. But so far, really, really happy with this plane. Obviously the prop getting damaged is not a it's not a, an Eros product issue or the Edge 540 issue. It is a Brian Phillips piloting issue in this regard. So, but as you can see, it still got me back to the ground just fine. 2200, uh, you know, I didn't really feel like there was a big advantage. I felt like maybe it was a little bit better on the pivot uh, in terms of 3D flight performance. I wanna be able to pivot that thing. And I felt like this has such a long lever arm from the center of gravity where the uh, the elevator is, you can really get leverage super easy. The wind is like wanting to point this plane and it's trying to wind vane right there. So beautiful plane, absolutely no problems with the canopy. We had some sort of a warning that the black will heat up and then it'll kind of like bend and stuff. We didn't see any problems with that. If you plan on keeping this out in the sun for hours, I think probably just cover it up with like a t-shirt or something that you can, you know, or a coat or something like that or a jacket. And that'll help prevent that from happening. I don't think you're gonna have problems with it myself, uh, but it was included in an addendum in the manual, which we thought was a little strange. Uh, that being said, this thing is very light on its feet. It flies great. It does everything you expect for a 3D plane. Super duper impressed with Eros for our first experience with an Eros. Uh, obviously three flights might be a little bit overkill for a flight review, but we just want you guys to know here at Brian Phillips RC, we're more about giving you guys the tools in your toolbox uh, and a little bit less about trying to make decisions for you on what you're gonna like or not like. Uh, but at the end of the day, this thing's great. I would say it's right up there with the uh, Horizons of the world, the FMS of the world so far. And we honestly didn't know what to expect. So super, super happy with this plane. Uh, can't wait to get the prop switched out and do a little more flying with it uh, off camera. Off camera, I do a lot better on 3D because I'm a little bit more uh, crazy than I am on camera because I don't feel bad for the camera crew not being able to see. <laughs> so this is, this is, this is a great plane. I think it's definitely something to consider. Now, if you're a brand new pilot, it might be a little bit much, just so you know. Also, the NX-8 has been working really fantastically. The AR-620, it's just a plain Jane, simple receiver, does what you need to do, not a lot of you know, extra frills. Uh, certainly, you're not gonna need an AS-3X receiver if you get the vector uh, flight controller that's included. Worked really good. I'm curious how this would do on just straight AS3X and safe. I think it would be commensurate to what we're seeing here. Um, but on a 3D plane, if you got a well-tuned option, just get the well-tuned option. Why, you know, reinvent the wheel? Um, but you could, if you wanted, if you want a flat bronze or something like that, uh, you could do that. And then also I felt like the refresh rate and the, um, you know, like the smoothest of the controls, they were all good. So I had really nothing to complain about. Uh, the auto leveling worked good. There was one time when I was in a dive over here on flight number two, where I was in the dive, I was spinning and then I put on safe and I did have to give it a little elevator to kind of get it there quicker. 
Um, beyond that, I, I would say it was a, a phenomenal experience. And by the way, sometimes when we put safe in, like uh, I think of the PT-17, you guys may not have seen the video, uh, the safe is a little bit slow to respond to because it has a muted output. So I think it just partially depends on what you're coming out of uh, for the auto leveling and or stabilization to kind of help correct. And then also the environmental impacts that are, that are being uh, subjected to the aircraft. So like if you got a strong wind, it might be a little slower to get leveled. So anyway. And sometimes when, and they'll see it if they watch the radio setup part, when we use other stabilizers, they're a pain. This one, gets, yeah, it would worked. like you didn't do it. You didn't have to do anything. We read the one page of directions and we did it, and it was that super was it. easy. And then um, one thing I can definitely say, if you guys were listening to my expo setup, I am going to change that right now. Let's go into the shade. Oh, okay. uh, we try to show you where we leave a plane. Uh, this is the third flight. You're going to see it in chronological order. Dual rates and expo. This is my normal setting here. This is extra, so it's like extra soft, uh, extra uh, relaxing, and this is crazy 3D, okay? So on my extra soft, aileron is fine. Elevator, that's way too much. We're gonna put it back to like 50. Uh, rudder, this was just way too much. 65 is probably enough. Then up here, rudder, I wanted a little bit less, more like 35. And then on elevator, just in the middle setting now. I want to put that back to 35 as well. I felt like we had better control. The pitchiness of a 3D plane is something you really, you're not going to get rid of, okay? They tend to be a little bit pitchy, but on our first flight, uh, we had a little bit of porpoising uh, before we were able to kick up the Elevator Expo. Elevator Expo is a lifesaver. If you guys are thinking of running a plane like this on a DXS, just don't waste your time. It's it, Don't do it. You, you can of course control the vector and there's people out there that will tell you you can do it because you technically can, uh, but why would you waste your time? You're not gonna have any expo and expo is the difference between flyable and insanity. If you're an excellent, really skilled 3D pilot, you can fly with zero expo, more power to you. I'm not, okay? I flip it into the crazy mode with no expo and it's like a whole different thing. I mean, it is a level of focus that for me is commensurate to flying a 3D helicopter, um, which again, I'm, you know, same, same kind of scenario. I'm not super skilled in that way. Some people are into that and that's all they do. So, but then you're probably not flying on a DXS if that's exactly. What you do. And that is my point. So thank you for making it for me. If you have a DXS and you're a new pilot, meaning you got like a ready to fly Habu and you got the DXS, I wouldn't recommend using that on other planes. I had somebody ask me, can I use that on the A-1064? I'm like, why would you do that? Just don't, just, guys, it sucks to have to spend the kind of money to get one of these things that you have to spend, especially when you're new, cause you're like, man, I could buy like two planes for that. True, but here's the thing, you gotta remember, you're gonna use this for all the planes you get. So like for me, um, I can't show you the screen, but it's 65 oh, yeah. planes right now. Okay, so 65 planes are commanded and controlled on this. Now I could also, redo some of the, well, like 78, I think that we have on the DX-18. Um, and then we have a lot of ready to fly planes that aren't at all in this radio. They aren't DSMX to begin with, which is the protocol that this transmits and then is received by the receiver. And then there's there's full duplex communication. You're, communi you're communicating from the transmitter to the receiver and the receiver to the transmitter. So it's actually sort of counterintuitive. This is a transmitter and receiver. That's a transmitter and receiver. And nobody ever talks about that, but that's what telemetry is. There's also another channel of communication, but I don't want to totally muddy the waters in this conversation. <laughs> anyway, the point is the computerized transmitters seem like, like, well, Brian, I've got six channels. I don't need any more. Well, I know I had the same argument with tech support when I was a new pilot too. I was like, why do I need six channels for this F-16 UMX that ended up sucking in my opinion? Well, the reason you do is because you need expo, you need mixing and all these different things. Okay, fine. Do you need it to make the plane no go in the air? No. Do you need it to make it fly good? Yes. And not only that, you will be amazed how much better it is to control a plane when you have expo that you start to understand and then you can make small minor adjustments because then that plane flies the way you want it to instead of the way that the expert at the factory in China wanted it to fly. Because you gotta remember, 
your expertise is different than mine. Mine is different than his. His is different than hers. Hers is different than yours. It, you know what I'm saying? It's everybody has a different uh, level of skill, experience, uh, taste in flying methods, environments, wind. All those things can be adapted. And the quicker you learn to adapt to your environment, to your skill set, and you will change over time too. You're going to get better, uh, or maybe you'll get worse if you don't fly for a long, long time. Uh, every season, things like that. The idea is you can adjust. So that's part of the reason why these things are so important. They're very expensive, but the thing is you only really have to buy one. And uh, even if you drop it and break it, you can, you can fix them. So if you run it over at the truck or car, you're probably not gonna fix it. Then you're gonna have to buy another one. So anyway, in closing, this is about the Edge 540. Great plane. Hit, we've been super happy with the NX-8 for all the planes we've been doing of late. We've done a huge variety of different types of planes, and we have only had one time where we lost access to everything we wanted to do by one channel. So to give you an idea, that is on the P-47 because it had thrust reverse, it had retracts, we set up flap runs, and we had master gains or thrust reverse we had to pick between. So that was a bummer. If we had an NX-10, we could do that, but there is a big big jump in price from the NX-8 to the NX-10. And I just think for the average Joe, that's probably going to be unusual. And so in our experience, the best thing to do is just figure out your plane, how you want to fly it, and then your thrust reverse replaces your master gain once you've figured it out. So without further ado, guys, stay tuned. I know some of this stuff gets off topic from this plane versus another plane versus another plane, but that's what we do here at Brian Phillips RC is we try to bring our uh, holistic approach. We, you know, like all the different planes that we've flown, we kind of like our ball of wax gets bigger and bigger in our opinion, uh, gets more well refined as we work through this process. We're not going to try to like hyper focus and put on our blinders. Like we don't know that there's an extra 300 that exists right now. We know that we have one in the basement and we'll be re-reviewing another one here shortly. But anyway, the point is, when there's competitive brands, you don't come to Brian Phillips RC for me to tell you which one to buy. We come, you come to Brian Phillips RC so you can see how we flew, uh, how we flew it, what our experience was like, whether it was a pain in the butt to get the wings on. In this case, we did struggle a little bit with four bolts. You'll see that wasn't hard. It just took us like an extra two minutes to figure out what was going on. Got it fixed. Well, definitely wasn't a dynam surgery. Um, but anyway, when you come here to Brian Phillips RC, you know, you, you're going to get no BS. You're going to get a lot of you know, elaborate ex explanations on things you probably didn't even want to hear about. And then you can make a really good, really educated uh, decision on which plane makes best sense for you. Because even though we love working with Arrows so far, it's been great. We love working with Horizon, FMS, a big Hobby, all these different brands. Um, they send us planes, we review them, and we put out the information for you guys to make your final decision. But at the end of the day, if you want to help support our channel, if you want us to help build clout with Arrows, then you will follow the link in the video description and buy that particular plane or a plane like it from uh, hobbyzone.com. So we just want you to know that we work with these uh, companies in, in partnerships where the first thing that we talk to them about is we're gonna be honest, we're gonna be thorough, and we're gonna, we're gonna try to communicate with you guys and keep you up to speed on what we know. So if they say no, we say no. And we've never had to say no to anybody. So it's been good. All the manufacturers we work with, they want you guys to know what's out there too. They are aware of the flaws, believe me. They may not point them out like we do, but we do. So if there's a flaw, then you'll see it here or we'll kind of help you understand like, hey, I crashed or this thing crashed for me <laughs> and we'll help you to decide between those two scenarios. But so far, extremely happy with this. We did break the prop. That was a Brian Phillips issue, not an Eros issue. So don't hold it against them. Although, if you're at or below my skill level or floating around my skill level, you may want to buy a couple extra spare props. Just an idea. Um, also, I just wanted to let you know that uh, when you do break a prop, always double check your motor mounts. When you take off the prop, just kind of give a really firm hold on the plane and just make sure you don't see play or slop, okay? Because when you get into that vibration, that vibration for a short period can back off bolts like you wouldn't believe. So double check that stuff when you're getting that prop swapped. I'm sure I've got some spare props. We'll probably just put one on this afternoon when we get ready to put it away uh, because I like to have my planes ready to fly at a moment's notice. So, all right guys, stay tuned for the unbox build radio setup. 
Uh, thanks, Eros, for working with us on this. We're excited to uh, kind of enter this new experience with you guys, add you to the repertoire, and we love reviewing planes that are good. When we get bad planes, it is a big downer for everybody. Mm -hmm. So when we get good planes, we're super happy. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Check the links in the video description. Support us with Patreon and PayPal if you'd like, uh, but mostly come back for more and stay tuned. YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. What do we have here? We have a small box. We've been opening many boxes lately. This one's actually quite exciting. It's the culmination of many, many years of bothering one particular company to start working with us and they were too busy, but then all of a sudden they weren't too busy. <laughs> so we're gonna open this. <laughs> it's upside down. <laughs> I cut the wrong side of the box. There we, go. we always unbox upside down. Still a mystery. I just wanna make sure there's nothing popping out of here. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a battery in here. What do we have here? This is a LiPo, high discharge LiPo battery. And it looks like it's, well, spoiler alert, if you didn't already see the first 20 minutes of this video, hour of this video, it's an Eros LiPo. Nice. So this one here, uh, just so we, the 3300 uh, 4S. Yeah, 14.8 volts, 35C pack. Uh, looks nice and square and flat. Obviously this thing's not a smart, but it does have an XT60 on it and a regular balance discharge. So we'll see how that works out. We'll go ahead and put that back here. And uh, when it comes to uh, batteries, I have a strong leaning toward a certain brand uh, because we've had good luck with them. And so we've been using them and uh, we'll try to showcase what Eros has to offer um, when available because at the end of the day, we know what it's like to pay shipping twice and we know you don't want to do it. So here we go. Out we go. It's new and exciting. It's brand new. Maybe one other person released before we did. But we had prior commitments. Sorry, Eros. Uh-oh, important. It's in Chinese. As the cockpit is painted black, exposure to the sun will cause deformation. Please do not expose it to the sun after the flight. <laughs> okay. Okie okay. dokie. Noted. We'll see. <laughs> Get out of your box. Whoa. 1300 millimeter edge. Okay. Edge 540. This is 1300 millimeters of wingspan. Flight weights around 1900. I actually like the fact that they say around instead of exactly. Uh, it's a four channel setup. Recommended battery size is 14.8 uh, volts, 2600. So this one's a 3300, so we were a little bit concerned about that one. So we have a 2700 cooking right now, which is a smart pack. Center gravity is 90 to 100. ESC 60 amp, good lordy lord. This is only 1300 milliamp plane, or 1300 millimeter plane, and it's got a 60 amp ESC. Goodness gracious. Four 23 gram servos. Okay, we're gonna find out. So obviously this is a 3D plane, I think. Or wait, is this just a sport plane? I don't know. Every time I see these things, they're like uh, set up as a 3D plane, but maybe this is just like an insane fast one, which is pretty cool. I like the colors. Mm -hmm. It's not blue. Yep. It's Definitely orange. Like Good call on that and one, Eros. It has a wood prop, which is also my Oh favorite. yeah. That is the third that. plane in a row that we have done with a wood I prop. never get a wood prop. I gotta tape this. Yep. Camera crew does love good wood prop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this out of the box. I'm excited because we've been wanting to work with arrows for a long time. And finally they decided, hey, we should work with those guys. All right, cool. So here we go, look at this. Wow. Looks like it's like well packed, that. concise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, everything looks, I mean, this, on par with what we're used to seeing. And we see a bunch of different brands, so I would say it's probably just fine. Well-engineered box. Jeez, that control horn is so long. You know where that control horn would be nice? <laughs> in, in the wings of that thing over there. Are we you showing can, them? You can pan okay. quick. They're gonna see it, are you kidding me? Oh, I know. That yeah, thing. that yep. plane, that. yeah, that plane had some real short aileron control, control horns. horns and it was like, oh, what a pain. 
So anyway, okay, so they got the double wing support thing over here. And this bright orange paint, it's actually cool because it's a flat paint. And let's pull this thing out. Oh man, that feels really nice actually. Feels, feels light, but it's firm. Look at this, look at this. Even on the wing tip out here past the support, look at that. I don't know how well it's gonna do when you crash, but the thing is, like it's, it's strong, it's stiff. Look at this, guys, look at this. And there's not even a... I could break it, but I'm not gonna break it. I'm just saying, look, I'm pushing pretty dang hard. Yeah. That's awesome, and then nice servos. 23 gram digital metal. See, they're listening to us. And balls. Everybody loves a good pair. Oh my goodness, look at the aileron, it's huge. Okay, this has gotta be a 3D plane. I was looking at, but look at the shape of the wing. It's like they've designed this. That's fiberglass. Is that? I don't know, we're... Nope, carbon fiber, I was wrong. Uh, where does this go? You only have one piece out and you're already putting it together. I'm not putting it together, I'm just, I'm excited to stick it in there, so I did. All right, so we also have some landing gear here. I always try to pull these out in a super specific order, as you can tell. Okay, Eros, we got some wheel pants here. Those look like they have good play. I am a pants. I like, I like my wheel pants to work or I don't want them, okay? Mm -hmm. So if they don't, but they feel stiff. They feel like they're really well positioned. I'm impressed so far. I mean, granted, we're on the second piece out of the box. We've never, full disclosure, we've never actually used an Eros, R, an Aero, R, Eros RC plane before. Ooh, that makes me a little nervous though. Oh, embedded hinges. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, I can't believe that's just a pinch hinge. hinge. Okay, so just hilarious little detail. The control surface is about two thirds the size of the uh, horizontal stabilizer. That's pretty cool. This thing's gonna be crazy. All right, so we have another one, embedded hinge, really, really cool. Huge support, huge. That's awesome. There's actually two spars, what the hey? Oh, one is gonna adapt it to the fuse and then one's gonna brace it. Mm. Okay, so oh, look at this. That's really nice. Oh, nice. I'm liking it, guys. That's sweet. I'm really happy so far with this. Surprised at the quality. I mean, my understanding is that Eros is a little bit more economical than some of the other choices on the market right now. But um, usually that means that you're gonna give up a little bit on quality, but. So far. So far, so good. Yeah. I don't wanna jinx it. Oh my goodness. See? We love us a good wood prop. Check this out. Check this out. That is so close to the same size. Holy cow, that's a 13.6 by the way. This one came from a competitive offering. <coughs> Might be sitting over there. Just saying, in case you notice. <laughs> we should, hey, look, it's, it's not folded. folded it's not folded. We got a manual. We're gonna find out how good the manual is. My expectations are always very low for manuals from Chinese companies. I assume this is a Chinese company. I mean, they had a Chinese label on it that warned us about that. It is, because here's the stabilization directions. All right. Or are they like, oh yeah, there you go, okay. That's fine. Jeez. It's English on the back. Oh, I thought they had four screws for each wing. It's actually four screws for the wing pair. Oh, Guys, mates up and then. This is gonna be awesome. You know, there's something about when you got 200 or more planes sitting in your house, you don't wanna spend three and a half hours or 35 hours mm -hmm. building the next one. Nope. Generally speaking. Now I'm not saying that there's not value in a 35 hour build for somebody that's got like a winter project they wanna do and just really wanna have something nice. Look at that, that's a good size. I like 1300 milli millimeters is a good size. You know, it's, it's we kinda started in the 1200 millimeter range after we got out of the UMXs and 1300 millimeters, this thing is gonna rip around though. Look how yeah. huge. Look how huge those control surfaces are. I know. Let's give them some close-ups. I mean, in terms of foam and stuff, these things these things have embedded pinch hinges. It's a pinch hinge with embedded, three of them, carbon fiber reinforcement all the way down the length, mm -hmm. one of them on each. Then it looks like there's two spars. The wing joiner has a spar. Then there's another spar that's embedded. You can tell because these little slits are where the spars go. Serviceability, that is cool. Look. Two different styles of servo mounts already pre-cut. And look how clean it is around there. I know, there. it's like actually good. Um, you know, and 
Okay, so w when you see so many different types of planes, you see some that suck pretty bad, okay? Um, but you have to put it into the context of cost and you know, like what's the target audience for a particular plane. And I feel like the target audience for this, um, man, I really feel like they're outperforming themselves, which is cool. I mean, we didn't know what to expect. So we're actually pleasantly surprised so far. We've only got a half on box and I got the thing almost built. Nice tight fit, oh, flat. That's gonna be dirty when you stick it in the grass. I know, but try it's not gonna... to do that because it looks really nice, huh? Uh, don't want me to dip the tip, huh? No. Okay. Not on that one. I'll hold off. Well, hold on. We gotta, we gotta do this just to see how it's gonna look. Ooh, with the wood. Oh, oh that's so, that cool. so cool. Guys, we we love it when we can do a, a wood prop because we just think it looks so sweet. Yes. Interestingly enough, we have a uh, competitive offering that we have done and we'll probably do again that has a wood prop too. Okay, so let's pull this thing out. I must say I was a little disappointed about the warning with this. That seems a little bit janky to me. That looks nice though. Feel how heavy it is. It's wow. got a little weight. Here, go hand, hand over there. Yeah, but still. It's I like mean, nothing. Yeah. It's really light, which is sweet. Light planes, lighter on their feet. Boy, that looks really nice. Oh yeah, functional inlets. Look at this. Can you see my finger through there, guys? That is awesome. And yes, that one's also a functional inlet. Wow. Very, very cool. I don't even know if this thing comes off though. Because I don't think it, it doesn't. It doesn't come off. This comes up. Okay, Velcro straps. Looks like the mid-grade style. It's not the kind that'll break in half. Ooh, they do slip. Nice, nice. Yes, thank you, Eros. And then there's a place for all the wires to pop through. That looks like it's gonna be a bear cat. Interesting. Huh. Oh, look. Oh, it's got a vector stabilizer. Okay, so guys, just to be clear, rudder, throttle, why throttle? Elevator, aileron, why the heck would there be throttle? That doesn't make sense. Huh, and then there's the ESC right here, see it? Oh, by the way, we just wanted to acknowledge something from our last video. We've been having some mic issues and then as per usual, we had made an adjustment and thought we had it under wraps. And then all of a sudden, it just like started doing it again. We had taken out a, a full component from my mic system and then guess what? It started doing it again. So we are trying something new. So you're gonna have to let us know if the audio is satisfactory. This is. We're going like right up to current technology. So hopefully it works well. And uh, what did we order? Like another $10 cable or something. So we're really going, we're yeah, going all in now. Really? Um, okay, so CA hinges, that kind of sucks. I don't want to have to glue my hinges, but it's, it's better than a crappy pinch hinge that's going to break off. Yeah. So hmm, 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 I'm never a big fan of gluing hinges, guys. And yeah, I said the same thing on the Carbon Z Cub. I also said the same thing on the Carbon Z Cessna 150T. Like really, those are $600 plus planes and we gotta glue the thing on? Come on, come on now. We had to glue a lot on that thing. <laughs> like everything. Like all the things. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's everything out of the box, guys. Um, let's go ahead and park all these components. Wait, no, no. Uh, right yes! Here wow, you have a good eye. The nut and bolt sack. The camera crew caught that, thank you, camera crew. Uh, for those of you new to the uh, Brian Phillips RC, my wife is the camera crew. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a long, long standing inside joke that I call her the camera crew while filming. No, we don't call her the camera crew when we're not filming. I call her my wife's name because that's what we do. And yes, she does not take offense to it, so I do please. Not. It's you not, don't have to be offended it's, for me. Yeah, don't be offended <laughs> for her because she's not offended. Okay, cool. So that that was now a empty. clean and good unbox. Yep. And you know we have done a lot of unboxes on this channel, and we want to bring you guys the best representation of the best stuff here on Brian Phillips RC. So as per usual, when we started working with Arrows, we went through the normal question and answer period, and we talked to the people at Arrows, and we just said, hey, what's the deal? How does this work? Um, if we're going to work with you, we need you to be aware that we are honest to our audience. Our audience is our focus. And if we can't show when things are terrible, then let's just maybe not. And they were in full agreement as with all the other vendors. 
distributors and manufacturers that we work with. And then as usual, and uh, we never have tried to hide by, behind this, but if you buy this from the links in the video description below, you'll be helping to support and fund Brian Phillips RC so we can keep bringing free content to you here on YouTube, which is really much appreciated from us, from Megan and I, but also from the kids. We have four kids and we really do appreciate you guys supporting us in that way. You're gonna buy the planes anyway. We're not asking you to buy stuff you don't like. In fact, we specifically don't want you to buy things you don't want. And that's a big part of the reason why you should be coming back because we're gonna teach you by showing you A versus B and you can say A sucks and B is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna buy B. Or maybe just showing you the preference issues that we come up with and you might even share some. That looks so sweet. Oh my goodness, those wheel pants are perfect size. I'm loving it, loving it. This is so cool. So yeah, so anyway, full disclosure, we always like to share that. When we start a new relationship uh, with a new company and obviously Eros is uh, the newest in the long list of companies that we work with. Uh, thanks Eros for bringing us aboard or coming aboard on Brian Phillips RC. We hope that we will be able to have a, a long, you know, successful partnership here. Uh, but at the same time, audience, this is all about you. We wanna bring you the latest and greatest and I've been, it's been killing me because Eros has had a few planes that I really wanted to do in the last two years. And for whatever reason, I, we couldn't do them. So at this point, we're gonna get caught up and we're really <laughs> excited to bring you all these really sweet planes because at the end of the day, if you watch me do this and you watch me do say an extra 300, that's very similar then you can juxtapose those two and you can say, hey, what do I like about this? What do I like about this? And we're never gonna pressure you into one versus the other. That isn't what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. I'm sure Eros would love that and Horizon would love that. Dancing Wounds would love that. Banggood would love that. Um, all of the competitive lines, they come here so that you can see what you like best. And you get to make the decision. We just present it to you. And then if you buy from the links below, you'll support us. So anyway, enough about that for now. We're gonna build this thing and it's gonna go super smooth because I can already tell it's gonna be really easy to build. Yep. Um, we haven't done a vector stabilization system yet just because we've never worked with Eros before. Now Eros has a special stabilizer built in here. And what that's gonna do is it allows us to use a cheaper, but whatever grade quality, whether you wanna go with like a full on uh, spectrum or JR receiver or something crazy expensive or like a, um, you know, you could use um, Futaba, F8, you know, whatever you want, whatever, you can use whatever you want. So obviously my transmitter of choice, and as you guys know, we work with Tryzen, so we've been using the NX8, we love it, it's been great. And I'm gonna be totally frank with you. I've been telling you, you can do everything you want on this, and you pretty much can. And I think Eros would, would probably echo that. Uh, we finally ran into a plane where we had to give up a feature. <laughs> It sucked, it was terrible. So I don't know if that means I'm gonna be upgrading to the next stage. I do have a DX18 and I was using that for years, awesome platform, but everything is so slow in it because it's so much more demanding with the new Ford programming. And that being said, because this comes with the vector and I'm not sure if you can order it with or without the vector, but I just want you to be aware, you can get a standard six channel receiver. For many of you, that's gonna make a big cost difference. This is a plug and fly plane, which means when you're ordering an AR637, you're talking like a hundred bucks shipped basically, a little bit less. And obviously that price is gonna go up. So by the time you hear this, it's probably 120. But anyway, the point is they're expensive. Now, if you get the 630 and 10LS solution, you've got AS3X, you've got safe, really cool. But the thing is the vector will do some of these features for you so you can get a 620 or a 420, and then you can do the features you want or need, and then do without the features you don't wanna need. Now, the other thing that's nice about that is if you're not using the latest and greatest NX8, but instead you're using like an NX, or not an NX, but a DX5 or a DX6, then you can do standard pitch, yaw, roll, landing gear, throttle cut, this sort of thing. You can do that with your transmitter configuration, but you don't give up the flight performance that you would expect. So that's great, and it's gonna give you a multi-platform solution. So again, these are things that we know from the limited research. We don't know how well it's gonna work though. Magnetic attachment, that's pretty sweet. I had a sneaky suspicion that was gonna happen. Arrows, 4250, KV 910. 910 KV is pretty big. That's a big boy. Excited. 
Feels nice. Magnets don't feel like super, super touchy though. So we'll see if that works well. Um, sometimes on these things, you may want to tape them and then cut the tape if you have to get them off. Um, we usually have pretty good luck on that. Um, okay guys, I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna pause the video, get set up on the plane stand and build this thing right now. Stay tuned. All right, YouTube, so we got it on the plane stand. One of our subscribers a long time ago sent that to us. Tom, thank you still. <laughs> we appreciate that. It's been forever since we got that thing. Was it the long screws or the middle ones? The long, uh, no, the middle ones for the, the gear. The shorter ones? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a one point, or excuse me, a two. Tom incidentally sent us these two. <laughs> he sent us this, this uh, German kit of, I think it's Will. Weeha, Weeha. Am I saying that right? I don't, I don't know. know. Willa, it's drivers and they're really nice and yeah. they're super high quality. And I have many times stripped screws and thought, oh no, I just ruined my driver. No, they've worked really nice. Mm -hmm. So short of the RTL fasteners kit that we got, they have really nice ball ends on them. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that's better. But I like these hardened tips have been super awesome. And we haven't mentioned that forever. So we figured we better say thanks, Tom. And then uh, when we get out the uh, calipers, we can also thank our other. Yes. You know these people here about their names for like seven, eight, nine, ten years. They're gonna be like, I wish I would have never said yeah. that thing. Why do we send that to those people? <laughs> uh, so far, so good. Very, very tight. Very good finish. No trouble searching for holes. Um, like other brands, we have experienced where we have had to stop video for hours to find the other half of the screw holes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, you may have noticed we haven't done one of those for a while, but that's okay. Hardware was easy to identify. Yeah, the camera crew opened up the nut and bolt sack mm -hmm. and she laid them out in rows. Super easy peasy. I love builds that are easy, guys. I mean, seriously, the, the deeper we get into this habit, um, the more I appreciate an easy build. Uh, because yeah, it helps so much. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, so what's next? What do we gotta do next? They suggest the wing first, just so you guys know, but uh, I'm kind of a realist. I don't really want that wing in my way. I'm gonna do the do tail first. Do you wanna glue? I don't know, it depends. Okay. This can come out, because it's tools, right? Yes. Okay, so there's no glue involved? Mm -mm. Okay, so we already stuck this in in the unbox. We were talking about a second joiner there. Screw comes from the bottom. So I'm just gonna feed this through. 3D planes are, just so you guys know, full disclosure, if you've already seen me fly and you're like, man, you're kind of a lame 3D pilot. Yeah, I get it. That's, it's just not my primary thing. I like scale planes the best. And uh, I, I have an appreciation for all the different types of aircraft that are, that are out there and available. But, and of course we review stuff that we're not crazy about too. Um, but generally speaking, okay, so this is gonna have a linkage over here. We're not gonna put that on now, are we? We're just no, gonna wait, right? Yeah. Okay, good. But then, yeah. Short the screws, middle size. middle size? Yeah. Okay, cool. But anyway, what I was getting at is, um, at the end of the day, uh, we want you guys to see what's available, and then we can show you if it works as they suggest it does uh, without any 3D animation videos. <laughs> Hopefully nobody understands I what I don't do said. 3D animation videos. No. We try not to edit too much anyway on our channel. You may have noticed from the lots of him hawing around and mistake making on camera. Yep. Because a, a normal person would edit that stuff out. Unfortunately, our editor doesn't work for the company yet. <laughs> He's busy reviewing the plane still. <laughs> and the camera crew is busy filming. <laughs> Uh-oh. What's going on? Am I doing something wrong here? Oh, I'm not all the way in. There we are, now I'm in. Okay. I was having flashbacks. It was like, it was like, dino. There it goes. Dino. That's well. all I was thinking. No, I just didn't have it pushed all the way in. That actually wasn't too bad though. That's a really strong joiner that goes through the front there. Okay, so you see uh, these are held together too, which is nice. Really heavy duty, looks nice. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it's not gonna 
be so insane because that is a huge control surface. Yeah, but 3D planes, you kind of want huge control surfaces or you wouldn't be able to do hammerheads and things like things. that. Yeah, 3D things. So this is gonna receive that mm -hmm. to keep the tail in. And then I have learned my, I've learned from experience, get these things straight first. Don't screw around, you gotta do it right. Now these are designed to work with thin CA, but you have to have foam safe and thin CA, uh, I believe. Actually, it didn't say, did it? It does not. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm. It just says glue. Interesting. You know what? I'm having a hard time reaching. Sorry. Didn't you suggest doing this first? I think I did. That's weird. I wonder why you would have done that. I don't know. Okay, so this is gonna go, um, I feel like I'm, I'm down too far, aren't I? Oh, there it goes. Much easier now. I wasn't quite lined up vertically. I was lined up on all three holes. I don't know if you guys can see that good, but I think I'm gonna just do a little something different. Let's get an X-Acto knife. I wanna open that just a hair. Those little pockets? Yeah, you're gonna okay. have to let me have some space there, camera crew, sorry. Okay, so these pockets, I'm just gonna open the edge I'm just having trouble mostly with the middle one. That's all. I think maybe just a little glue seeped in there. That's probably what happened. Oh. I bet that's it. Yeah. Cause you can, you, did you hear that? Yeah. Some China glue got in the crack. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> if you guys don't know what China glue is, just stay tuned. You'll see. Give it time. You'll see. China glue is the uh, unmarked glue bottles that you get from China. Jane. Is there like a screw that goes through here? Yes, one of the... Hold those. on a second. Where? Where does the screw go? There's a screw. That goes through, like, down there? Down here. Do you want to... Yeah. Right there? With just one of those small little Phillips ones. What? I'm so confused. Oh, that locks the... That locks this in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But then am I supposed to push that thing all the way in? Or is that to leave Clarence? Clarence? I don't know. No, look, come look. You see this thing? This is what I'm talking about right here. Oh. Does that get pushed all the way into the foam? I'm sort of not sure. It's the first time I've been unsure on this model build. Let's flip this over. Woo, it's a little slick. Be careful. I wanna try two things. I wanna see if I can get that tail to stand up a little higher so I can see it real good. See, normally you want that hinge to be fairly tight in there, like mm -hmm. that. But you see, if you want that extreme throw, it may have to stay. You see what I'm talking about there, camera crew? Call me nuts. Well. That's all I'm talking about right there. It's almost like there, there's something I've missed. You see, that thing. I think it's just supposed to touch. I think that's it, just to keep the geometry. Because there's not out. really a pocket for it to go into, right? No, but see, look at the look at the top here, camera crew. See this? There's a gap here. That's normal. But then this this needs to come here. Okay, this is what I'm talking about, guys. This is the gap I'm talking about. I feel like that needs to be collapsed. But then our hinge is like not quite square. And so I'm not sure if we need to force this way in so that it actually gets out of square like that. Is that what we're trying to do? Hmm, huh. I'm just not sure. I don't want to get it wrong. Mm -mm. I feel like that little disparity is probably within the realm of imperfections that would be allowed. Yeah. I think we're good there. I think it looks It looks good, you got plenty there. of clearance. Yeah. I mean, it's okay if it's a little bit far back. The problem is what happens is, okay, so if you have a CA hinge and the gap is too big, okay, you got your two surfaces here and your CA hinge is like this, what happens is you'll push, you'll push, and then like some of the hinge, it'll allow the, the, the hinge to fall off like this. And then when it pulls this way, because you're only doing it from one side. So we can actually change the ge geometry on one side to move the surface, it slips the surface out of the way. It's, it's weird, you'll have to just try it sometime, screw it up and you'll see what I'm talking about. Mm. 
Um, okay, so what are we gonna do? We're we gonna use CA on this. We're we gonna throw caution to the wind. What would be your other option? Well, thin, thin CA is really what should be used here because then you would, you would actually get those together and then you would drip CA and it would wick it into the hole. Mm -hmm. But I think in our case, we're probably gonna use this huge amount of leftovers here, this gigantic amount. Mm -hmm. See that down there? Yeah. Bottle number two. I'll go get some thin CA, that's foam safe. All right guys, so I've got this. This is a foam safe and thin. This is foam safe and thick or medium thickness, okay? It's BSI brand, that's what we've used in the past and it's usually done us right. Now look how runny that is, okay? It's like water, okay? So the reason that we're showing you this is because I have a method to keeping my CA from going bad quickly. And I'm not suggesting that you necessarily copy because we have mixed results. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it works terrible. But I can tell you this, I don't ever cut the tips on these bottles because I have so many of them. I always keep my brand new bottles with as little air in there because this is, this was 30 bucks when I bought it like a year ago. So this stuff adds up quick. I mean, you get two, three bottles, you're a hundred bucks deep in glue and you, you can put that in one little bag like this. So anyway, these two stay in a bag in a storage area, just like I do with my epoxy. So I never talk about that, but just so you guys know, like I feel the pain, trust me. We get a lot of planes, we build a lot of planes. So you see this? I break these free. They usually do get glued on just because the nature of the glue, you guys know what it's all about. Okay, and you have to be super careful with the thin one. And you're like, well, why are you taking the lid off like that, Brian? What, what kind of a weirdo are you? Well, ordinarily I would fill another bottle and you have to be super careful to keep that material out of the tip, okay? And then I'm gonna take this tip that is cut and it is of an unlike, non-foam safe, but this tip is brand new. And it's gonna give us a good clean tip to work with while we do this job, okay? And then I can put it all back together. Yeah, seriously. That, if, as soon as you guys work with the CA a little bit, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about because CA is crazy expensive and you're lucky to get a couple years out of a bottle if you're not just using it up right away. Right. And by the way, when it's fresh, it works really nice. And it's, it's, um, it's almost like miracle stuff. Uh, compared to what we had as kids. Because I remember using CA as a kid and the stuff was garbage and I could never get it to set up, okay? But now that I'm an adult and I have to pay for all this stuff and my parents aren't paying for it, <laughs> it is very nice to have a couple of different methods. Now, the other thing is you wouldn't ordinarily have to use an Instaset product, which is like a kicker. But again, this stuff isn't exactly free either. And we have big bottles of it and we split it and put it back in there and then I use the tail of it to kind of paint it where I want it. It works better than spraying. Also, if you spray on this finish, it'll probably run because this is paint. So be aware of it. That's why I'm saying I don't like gluing these things because it's just one obstacle for people that are newer pilots. This is a 3D plane. It's not exactly a new plane, like a new pilot plane. And this tip is clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this open and I'm gonna let this, you gotta let my elbow be free there, camera crew. Let it wick in, okay? You don't need a ton. It's actually kind of miraculous how little you really need to make it work, but I don't wanna get it down here in this joint, okay? See, it wicks in. You see how that drip went down and then it wicked in? You can turn the flash on if you need to. Now, what's the next step? The next step is do the other side. Other side. Yep, the next step is to come over here and preferably, you go ahead and turn that flash yep, on, yeah. thank you. Okay, so see that? Just let it wick in. Just touch it and it'll wick right in, okay? I'm not even tipping it all the way over. And then what's gonna happen is that glue, if you did your job right, which at this point you will have done your job right, if you did it like I did there, it's not really that hard, that stuff will set in mere moments, okay? And the idea is it wicks into that product. So what happens is there's a there's a rough surface that's like, um, almost like a matte finish on those CA hinges. And that is designed to wick this product into it and around it. And then the mating surface that it's up against, this actually bridges the gap a little teeny bit. There's very little gap filling properties in the thin, but in the medium, it's quite a bit. That's why it won't wick into the hole. So you have to be careful. So now what I'm gonna do when I'm done with this, 
is I'm gonna take that cap off, and yes, this is the medium non-foam safe color for BSI. The foam safe thin is white, the foam safe medium is black. So those are the, gonna be the main ones that you're gonna get when you're a new um, RC enthusiast and you're crashing like every five minutes. You're gonna probably need a couple bottles like this. You can get smaller bottles that are like this and they cost a lot less, but they, they, you burn through them really quick. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you an idea, when we built this plane here, we used pretty much an entire bottle of this stuff. So, and you weren't even supposed to use CA. You were supposed to use epoxy, which would have been smart, but that's all right. So anyway, uh, now that that's sitting, we can pretty much move on to the next steps, but just bear in mind, if you have CA and you wanna make it last for a long time, uh, the other thing is to have clean tips, and the best way to keep your tips clean is to wipe your tip off when you're done using it. Correct? Correct. Okay. So, if you want your stuff to set up quick, and then, here's what I'm gonna do next. Off camera, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this back down to my storage area where it's cool and dark most of the time, and uh, it's sealed. And this is gonna go into a box with a bunch of adhesives. And then that's gonna sit there and get old and probably not work when I need it. <laughs> but it won't be dried up for a long time, that's the key. A lot of people try to put them in their fridge and then, you know, look how many airplanes I have in my living room right now, okay? I have zero CA in my fridge. Yeah, Yeah, because I would be living in the backyard mm -hmm. if that happened. You get no fridge space. No fridge space. Yeah. I barely get fridge space for drinks. <laughs> but that's okay, probably because we need two fridges with six people in the family. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. I am gonna do a, a little bit of kicker. And so you can see I've got like CA that's built up on the tip here. That's just kind of a, not really a big deal. You can break it off anytime you want. So I just dip the tip, grab what I need, and then set it in there, and then let it work. Now I'm trying to keep that concentrated to the very deepest uh, part of the joint. Uh, and you shouldn't really technically you shouldn't have to do this, but uh, you know, I'm a realist I'm kind of sitting here thinking to myself. I hope they glued the other half because I didn't even try Didn't pay attention Okay, and if I and if they didn't then I'll have to you see what I'm talking about that mm -hmm. stuff is gonna run a little bit mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna just come over and do the other side and this stuff is just an accelerant it accelerates the kick uh, the kicker accelerates uh, the foam glue. Now be aware, when you use this on foam safe glue, it makes the reaction time much shorter, which generates more heat. And therefore, even on foam safe applications with foam safe glue, it will sometimes melt the uh, crappiest foam. And I'm talking the polystyrene stuff, you know, that's, that feels like, uh, you know, plates that you get at your family reunion or whatever, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna let this work. And you can see it's already held in there. Now, minutes from gluing this, you're good to go for flying, as far as I'm concerned. Anybody that tells you differently has never flown with me. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, you should be set. It's, um, it's not near as hard as I just showed because you wouldn't be filming it. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're just gonna let that be for a minute or two. And what's next, camera crew? Do you wanna put that screw in the tail wheel? So we can <sighs> Yeah, and it's one of the short ones? One of the small ones. Okay, so there's three small ones that are Phillips heads. And then there was like... And eight. I don't know where we need the other little ones, so it might just be spare. Okay. Because I believe there's only one screw, right? Right there. Or is it on both sides? It's just a weird... Um, this, this spot's a little bit weird. Like I, I've seen this before and I always get weirded out by these screws. Because this is supposed to help prevent that little... Um, Oh yeah, it's, it's actually hitting, it's hitting the steel mm. of this. Oh. So, but I, I've always thought that was a goofy way of doing it. Is there one on both sides? Yeah, there's one on both sides, oh. camera crew, that's okay. why. It, it actually goes in and it like bites the side Inches of the shaft. Oh, okay. Ow. And no. there's one extra. Yep. So there's one extra. I yeah, one extra is customary within most um, model applications, unless of course, um, you're talking about like a really expensive weird bolt or a really big bolt. We've yeah. been seeing that for years and some of the best brands have gotten away from that. And to be perfectly frank with you, I want the extra screw. Yeah. Hardware is expensive and RTLfasteners.com. We have a link below. 
you can, uh, well, actually, it's just, just their website. And then you can use a coupon code, get 30% off, and save yourself a buck or two, and then help us build clout with all these companies we work with. Thank you, guys. All right, so continuing onward. It's the world's shortest commercial. <laughs> so we have this screwed in. We yep. have the uh, tail pretty much done. Now, you'll note that we don't have anything hooked up yet. There's no reason to at this point. We want to get the stabilizer and the receiver installed before we do that. I think I might take it off the plane stand for now because the wings. Um, except the wings screw in from the bottom. Okay. Right. Then, I we'll mean, then ahead. we should be done with the plane stand. Man, I used up my one time being wrong this week. <sighs> you did. <laughs> uh, just kidding, guys. For the next 10 minutes. All right, so this is going to go like this. And then there's a top and a bottom here. And I'm just trying to figure out what's gonna make the most sense. I don't know that it's like a particularly great way to do it. You just kind of stick it in there and you're done. <gasps> don't run your servos like that. It's hard on them. I mean, obviously you're... Sorry. What are you, what are you doing over there? Trying to, trying to attack my plane? <laughs> trying Jesus to get a better gracious. shot. No, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna stick this in here like this. And then I was just thinking about this wire because this wire has to be protruded through the top. Oh. And so what I'm thinking is that I, I kind of want this to be bundled up here so I can see it. Because, oh man, I hate doing that to the servos. That's so mean to servos. It's a good way to ruin your servos, folks. So don't do that if you can avoid it. I'm hitting something. There it is, I got it. The servo edge. The cables kind of give me trouble. There we go. Hey, do me a favor, grab the end of that and push it toward me. It's not hard to push, it's just I can't pull that far. Yes! Wow. Okay, now, really good fit, guys. Yeah. Really, really good fitment. I'm actually super surprised. I was sort of expecting lower quality. Yeah. This is like way higher quality than I was expecting. So that's good. I mean, I love being surprised in that direction. Yeah, for sure. We're surprised the other direction once in a while. And it's like, oh, great. Thanks, guys, for sending us a broken plane, you idiots. Don't you realize we're filming this? <laughs> Pretty sure the companies don't vet the ones they're sending us. That would be smart if they did, but they're, they don't. <laughs> they don't have time for that crap. All right, we've often asked that question. Would you please? <laughs> All right, you see this? Where is that coming up from? It comes up on top of the other orange. This is a little bit challenging to see. Oh. Mm. I wouldn't call it hard. I mean, we've done way, way worse wing installs. Yeah. I don't think you're gonna wanna have to redo this like to get to the field though. Guys, check out from the side mm -hmm. here. I got forceps. Guys, if you have forceps, get ready to live. If you don't have forceps, they are awesome. You should get some. They work really nice for applications like that where you just got like a weird place to reach from. Okay, so full disclosure, the other thing too, I just wanted to point out that's gonna be obvious to many of you who watch the channel. I'm a big flaps guy, and you're probably thinking to yourself, but Brian, you won't be able to do flaps with that vector receiver thing. And that is true. I don't believe we can do flap rounds with it. Maybe we can, and if we can, I stand corrected, but my guess is we probably can't support flap rounds with that. I would really like to have flaps on this plane, but honestly, 3D planes, can fly really slow, so flaps are kind of like, eh, it's not really necessary. It's not like you're gonna be flying along and have to slow it down to land. I mean, when you can just like hover it in front of you and then go out and pick it up out of the sky. Camera crew's gonna do that off camera though. Okay, I'll work on that. All right, so Y cable. This is for the ailerons. So kind of the same thing, we have the Futaba or the JR color code here. So we got one brown's gonna line up with the brown. Red's gonna line up with the red, and yellow's gonna line up with the yellow. Pretty simple stuff. Got good high quality connectors, no problems there. We've come to expect that. Pretty much everybody's using good stuff on the connectors these days, which is nice. Wasn't always that way, by the way. Every once in a while we'll get a bad one, but it's very rare. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's fluky, fluky when that happens. Okay, good there, good there. All right, so now we're gonna need access to that, right? Because we gotta get screws tightened. I suppose putting the screws in might be a great idea now, don't probably you think? Probably, just so we don't So we don't forget? forget? Yeah, probably. Okay. All right, so, so these are the are long, long screws? Ones. Yep, there should be one extra. All right, good. Yeah, it's the same, same size this whole time. 
Uh, two millimeters two millimeter. driver, okay. The little screws for the tail wheel were just a small Phillips. Like yeah. You used a little China Yeah, the one that went in from the side. Yep. Yep. And we used one of our China screwdrivers, like camera crew said. The China screwdrivers just mean we got them from some Chinese airplane. And we have a thousand of them in which our is boat. Which is funny because, you know, some of the stuff we get from China is like very questionable in quality, but then other things are like really nice and I just don't understand it. Yeah. I think it's just the fact that there's like billions of people that live there and there's going to be some that do a really good job building stuff and then some that do a really piss poor job. And you want to know why they're piss poor? Guys, if you were wondering, it's because that's what the specs are from the Americans that are importing them. <laughs> just in case you were wondering. I didn't know if you guys realized that, but that's the truth. <laughs> okay. And then the steel, of course. Ooh, ooh, I feel like, come on now, get in there. What am I doing wrong? I feel like I'm not lining up. Let's try this one. Let's go over here and see if I can, I might need your help trying to get alignment though. Ooh, that one went right away. I feel like it's going, or is it going? I honestly can't tell. See? They're long screws. No, I know, I can, I can hear, I can hear it, but I just can't tell. It's frustrating because it's in a spot. Oh, well, I can see. Can you? Hold on. Oh, I can see better now. I can see a lot better. Oh, I'm not even in. I mean, close, actually. This one's close, though. I've overshot this wing and I've undershot that wing. Okay, so I got to pull this wing out slightly toward my, toward my hip at the tip. And then that's going to open up the, the socket. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's good. Or is it good? I can't tell. It feels like it's going, but it's... No, nope, I don't think we're going yet. Yeah, I'm kind of sucking it up today. Okay, so this one here... Hmm. How can I help you? I don't know. I wish I had a magnet on the end of this. I think I have a magnet on the end of this tip, don't I? I feel like maybe this wing is pushed in a little bit too far. Hmm. Like I pushed this side too much, guys. And that's preventing this one from going in a little bit further. But then look how nice this finish is. Yeah, right I know. Here. So it looks like I'm right, but I can see only half of the hole right now. Hmm. Show them right here. See what I'm talking about? I wish I had an awl, actually. An awl would go in there and kind of align the holes. Maybe I could use the China oh, screwdriver. Yeah, I do see that. And then make the alignment that way. Let's try that. I bet that'll work. Okay, you're gonna have to scooch over. I'm sorry, camera crew. All right, so I'm gonna push this in. Yep, now look what happens to the wing. Is it moving? It feels like it's trying to move. Goodness gracious. That's one, one drawback to foam planes, guys. You'll find out real quick is that if there isn't good alignment, it can be challenging to get them figured out. There we go. I bet that's gonna do it. No? I wonder if I need to pull this back a little bit. Cause like I said, if I got this one in too far. All right, let's try this. I'm gonna see if I can back this one out. I wonder if I pin this one so I can't get it all the way in. Mm. There we go. All right, we're gonna pause. We'll figure this out and come back. Okay, so first things first, wanna let you know what I found out. Um, I think there might've been like just a little chunk of foam in there that prevented these from sliding together. Cause what I did was I, I backed this one out and then I got one hole started. So this one's in and tight. So let's show you that. Okay, so that's tight. So now this one that we're having trouble getting the alignment on, I think I should be able to get that one because I can hold up here where I can brace and then pull back just a little bit, okay? Now that's gonna hopefully give me enough alignment capability. And then once this one's aligned, I think we can slide the other one in because this one was going in past where it needed to be, okay? So let's see if that works. You hear that noise, that click, click, click? We're going now, it's gone. Yeah, so basically what happened was 
These two wing halves are allowed to slide in together and then they interlace like what was happening. We showed you out here. Well, I think what happened is there was a point where they interlaced at the top and there must've been a piece of foam that got stuck. So it's okay now. I don't like having to do that, but whatever. It's not really that big a deal. Ultimately they went. We didn't have to cut a hole and redesign the fuselage. Right. Okay. So this one's still getting there. There are quite a few turns on it, so don't give up. It takes about 400 turns. See, see, it's getting torqued down. And you can tell because my thumbs turn white. Okay. All right. So now that we have one wing secured and in place, now we should be able to ram this side in. And it's just, with foam planes, there's not always a great place to grab. So don't grab a really small point because you'll, you'll damage it. So you have to spread your hand out and then try to grab something that's secured like this. See how my arm is along the side of the plane? This plane stand does make it a little easier. And then we have this close to the edge of the counter. So it's easy to get my body next to it. And then I'm going to brace and push in hard. Okay. Yep. Those holes lined up. Perfect. Show them. See, the other two are lined up now. So because there's two lined up, it gives it an easier time hitting the other two. Yeah. Can you see the alignment? I don't mm -hmm. know if you got it pointed down there, hon. There's your, there's your nut zert. You see that copper or brass? That's what we're looking for, guys. So anyway, um, we were off camera for what, like a minute? I was yeah. thinking about that. So full disclosure. So this was not like one of those two hour off camera. What are we gonna do about this? No. We lucked out. That was a little bit annoying though. I'm still having trouble getting this one to line up. Let's see if we can get this one started. I did have to start the front on the other wing because then once I got it done, I was able to brace the plane and pull it back like a lever. Mm. I was able to pull it back and lever it in. It's just a super tight fit. And I don't know, I'm sort of torn. Do I want it to be that tight? Yeah, I don't know. Tight fitting wings like that, especially wings that mesh up like that, might be a good thing, but it's just not very fun to put together first time. Now, if you take apart your plane for trans transportation, which by the way, it's not a big plane. You should be able to stick this in between a back seat and a front seat and not have too many troubles. But what I am gonna say is if you take it apart and put it together, that, will event that won't be a problem on the third or fourth time. I can tell you that for sure. Because they just, they'll get worn out a little bit. Okay, finally, it's going. Oh, that was a pain. So, eh, that part wasn't so great, but you know what? It is what it is. We've kind of come to expect really tight fitment on our foam planes. Yeah, it's yep. just going now. It's going. Thank goodness. So yeah, four screws shouldn't take 20 minutes, but it kind of does when you're filming and you have problems. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. And these uh, mid-wing planes, Oh, oh my goodness. They do tighten down nicely, by the way. Um, what I was gonna say is these mid-wing planes, you can't always tell how much you're compressing around the foam. So be careful, if you tighten them too much, sometimes you'll make like a dent over here. So you wanna take a second and just make sure you're not squishing it too, too tight. Mm -hmm. And you end up with this like ugly, like squish mark. This one here didn't do any of that, which is cool. So very good. That plane feels really solid and really nice. I am super excited. I love the colors. I yeah. really do. Um, and then also, I'm quite excited about this. And we are going to use a, a Spectrum receiver today. Again, you wouldn't have to use the Spectrum receiver, but I, I really do like the simplicity of this. There's no antennas to worry about. The antennas are internal. And yes, they are designed for quite a long range. Um, they are supposed to do just as good as the one with antennas, but I'm not gonna make that claim because I don't believe it myself. Okay, so uh, the antennas are internal. I don't necessarily buy that they're just as good, but either way, it's nice not having a bunch of stuff flopping around in there. And this doesn't have to be hard mounted, it's just soft mounted, so you can literally land the wires and put that in there like that. Nice. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you want it to be hard mounted, you can. Uh, ideally, you'd stuff it into a hole like this where it fits great and you just leave it and you're done. Then if you need to work on it, you can. Obviously it's got the bind button instead of the bind plug, but you've also got the bind plug as well if you need it. Also the bind plug is a nice place if you're trying to power some LEDs or another accessory item. It gives you a nice clean place to do that as long as you don't have too much of a dead short between signal and ground. 
Sometimes retracts will actually trick that into thinking it's got a bind plug in there. So if you go just power to ground, you can steal power, run out, run your LEDs, things like that. So good little trick. You can also do a Y cable off of any channel because you're gonna get your BAC voltage at that point too. All right, cool. So we're back to the point, uh, which is building this plane. And look guys, look how easy this is. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so we have uh, S bus module. Let's see what else we got. Okay, we've got uh, rudder. We've got throttle. We've got elevator. And we've got ailerons. Now, I don't know if the S bus module is gonna allow us to just use only the S bus output. I don't know if there's S bus output on this AR620. I would have to look it up. I've never actually used it on an AR620. I know there's S bus on other serial receivers, but I don't know if this qualifies as one of those. So up next, radio setup. Well, I guess we gotta get the prop on there. Let's go ahead and get the prop on there. Let's get the CG marked. Let's do all the build before we start doing the radio setup. Okay. Um, also, as part of the radio setup, we will, full disclosure, be installing these. These are gonna go on the elevator and rudder, of course. And then let's show the people the extra screws we had. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a little scary when you end up with extra screws because you're like, oh boy, did I miss one? No, I just think they gave us extras. Yep. So that's good. So good for you guys at, at Arrow. So this is our first experience with Arrows. And I would say that other than getting that wing together, that was a pretty good experience. Mm -hmm. Super easy build, even, even with the wing. Yeah. Um, we'll see how the vector works. Now, I'm always reluctant because I've had very good luck with way long ago, Lemon RX receivers. And more recently, we've been using the uh, Spectrum lineup of AR630, 631, AR637. And then we've got some higher channel ones that we haven't really used yet because we haven't need the channels. Um, but we have been super happy with the forward programming capability and doing things like flap rounds and stuff like that. So yes, you can still do all that, by the way. All you have to do is just unplug these uh, from the plane and you could just eliminate that if you don't want it. Um, but either way, we just want you to understand that it's there, which is kind of nice. It does help hold the cost down a lot, I think. All right, so show the people what we're doing here. We're just basically getting the prop adapter. This has got a nut style on the back. So it makes a nice tight clearance, which is cool. Always like a nice tight fit. That is beautiful. Oh yeah, that's good. Looks really nice. And then of course, whoa, gosh, trying to stab the plane. I'm so glad it went in there and did it. That was dumb. Okay, so that goes on there. This washer goes like that. And then the nut, okay. Now, a couple things about power and whether or not you're gonna be hooking up your prop before you actually are in a position to know what the ESC is going to do. If you're in any doubt, just leave the prop off. There's two places where people get hurt in this hobby, generally speaking. And no, it is not people running into themselves while flying. I'm sure it does happen, but it's so inconsequential and such a statistical anomaly that it's not of great consequence. And that's not to say that it doesn't ever happen. But what does happen is people cut themselves on the props and people do have issues with lipos. So respect lipos, keep them discharged when you're not using them. You'll give yourself the best chance at success. And yes, I did put away a screw before we used it. Where did I lay that? I laid uh, it over here. Post. So we were supposed to use a, probably a middle, middle size. Yep. Okay, let's do the middle size one. So we were left with one of each yeah. extra. Yeah. Um, okay, so that being said, the one of each, this has countersunk. Let's see how that fits. Oh yeah, that feels pretty good. Feels like they have a countersunk hole in there. It's hard to tell from this angle. But anyway, getting back to the point about cutting yourself and burning your house down and things like this, don't do either of those things. Be careful, be smart. You guys are adults. And if you're not an adult, then we are addressing the adults here when we say these things. Don't come here for legal advice or safety advice. You're adults, you can make your own decisions. We trust you. But at the same time, seriously, be careful. Those are the two things that people should be worried about. And when I say worried, I mean use caution. Yeah, that's what I mean by worry. Common sense. Common sense. Or, well, it's kind of technical sense though. I mean, it's not common sense, it's uncommon sense. It's technical sense. Because 
people don't technically walk around handling props and batteries. So, you know, still common sense. All right, so we've got a receiver. We got a plane that's basically built, got the wires dropped out the bottom, and boy, that is absolutely gorgeous. This thing is light. I'm loving that, I'm loving that. And that prop is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I like the size, I like the colors. I don't like that that thing might melt in the sun. I kind of have a hard time believing it's gonna melt in the sun unless the thing sits out in the sun for some time. Yeah. But at the same time, boy, it is gorgeous looking and huge servos. By the way, let's look at the manual for just a quick second. Um, basically, what we would ordinarily do is we'd be jumping into the radio setup at this point. And so we're gonna essentially do that. Let's look up top. Battery tray is on the top. I didn't really talk about that, but that's a big deal. Uh, yes, we are setting up the radio on the bottom, but it's a top load battery tray. Let's see if we can even get our 26, 2700 that we have laid out. Let's see if that'll fit. Now I'm kind of assuming that Eros is gonna send us batteries that they want us to showcase and that's fine. Um, oh, we need to get the lead up here. See where the lead is, camera crew? It's down in the middle of the plane. Oh, yep, it is down So there. I'm believing this, this is probably an XT60. XT60 will be compatible with what we're using and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second if you guys don't know what I'm talking about yet. Where did it go? Oh man, it's really long. That's awesome. Oh, good. See that? Yes, nice, good. Okay, so a couple different theories on uh, connectors. Back in the day, I used to put XT60s on everything because they had disgusting EC connectors, E-flight connectors. And I love E-flight planes, but I don't not like the E-flight connector. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and that was not uncommon within the uh, industry. Everybody kind of hated them because they were really hard to plug in and they pass no more current than these. These of course do fit, but of course you're not gonna get any data from the smart pin. That pin in the middle, that gold thing you see between those two doohickeys on the IC3, this is called an IC3, this is an Hextronics uh, 4S, 4S balance charge port, which is also known as a pH connector, I believe. Hextronics pH. But anyway, there's five wires on there. So you have the most positive and then you have the most negative. So it's negative and positive, then negative and positive, and then negative and positive, and then negative and positive. And these four cells are in series. That's why it's called a 4S. And that's how they get the 14.8 volt reading, which has to do with 4.2 volts times four or 3.6 times four. I don't know. They show them in nominal ranges, which is weird instead of the fully charged range. Now, I'm not big on using Velcro, but on a 3D plane, sometimes that's kind of handy and intelligent. So the recommended choice would be to take that Velcro off, stick it on your battery. In our case, I'm just gonna see if the dang thing fits. Okay, so I gotta undo the Velcro just to get the thing to plop down in there. I'm gonna feed this through just so it's easy for me. Okay, and again, I'm trying to feed it in. I'm not trying to actually get this totally you know, ready to rock and roll necessarily, but I wanna see how it fits and then we can look at uh, CG as well. Okay, so now, just, just to show you, I'm not even gonna hook it up, but I'm gonna still use this just to hold that connector where it's gonna need to be. You got lots of room up here, okay? Mm -hmm. So always be mindful of where your motor is, okay? You don't want your motor to be sticking through a firewall and have this spinning shaft like this, rubbing on the battery, and then, and then, the plane blows up in a million pieces in extraordinary style. That's never happened that I know of. No, That's not kinda, to us. Yeah, not to us yet, yet, someday, never say never. <laughs> I have caught a plane on fire once. Oh my. It was a Super Cub with a 30 amp donkey ESC setup. Well, there's your first problem. It was from Hobby King. I used to use those like crazy because I would burn through ESCs and stuff all the time. When I was new, I used to destroy stuff so much faster than I do now. By the way, guys, this is your moment of encouragement from a slightly more experienced pilot or a slightly lot less experienced pilot. Um, it gets better. That was so encouraging. That was it. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> you, you don't have to fix stuff as much after you get that to be in a better pilot. I mean, true. like a lot less. 
Yeah. So yeah, my CA sits for a few weeks or months before I use it. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying I don't crash because I crash a lot. You guys see it on this channel, but mostly because I'm pushing the envelope or flying close to trees or something stupid like that. Okay, so it's strapped in there. I wouldn't say that's like flight ready necessarily, but it's in there good enough to be able to test the CG. And you'll note that I just connected the positive side, but not the negative side. So I can kind of simulate where that wire is going to lead and uh, sit and rest. Okay, so that worked pretty good. We're going to have a little extra room up here. So the thickness of this is not necessarily going to press that down. It should fit. Yep. Okay. So very well designed so far. Okay, so now um, this plane is sort of symmetrical, so I'm not sure if I want to test the CG. Probably going to test the CG on the bottom of the main wing because the landing gear are going to be heavier than the absence of landing gear on the other side. The vertical stabilizer and rudder, of course, are going to take up, you know, make some weight, but not as much as the metal on the wheels. So when you mark the CG, we're going to mark the CG on the bottom. We're going to put our finger on it and then we can balance it. Okay, that's going to tell us if we're balanced out for the CG. Now, that being said, CG on a 3D plane is a weird scenario. We're going to go through this shortly. Mm-hmm. It's a couple pages back. <sighs> okay. It's up here. So if you can... Okay. So it talks about your receiver diagram here. We'll actually mark this here. They talk about throws. I don't mess with that stuff. I'll talk about that a little later. Okay, 90 to 100 millimeters. And then, of course... You can look at this chart. You can have more throw on the outside and less throw on the inside. That's from the servo side. This is on the wing or the aileron elevator rudder. And same thing here. You're going to go, it tells you it wants the ailerons in the third hole in, rudder on the second hole in, and then elevator on the third hole in. Okay, so we'll do that. And the reason we're going to do that is because this is an unknown stabilizer for us. So as a result, if you're trying to fine tune an aircraft, you can move the controls to different sections on the on these control horns or on the surfaces. Now these are ball joint surfaces, so there's not really a lot of adjustment, but there's usually actually two holes. And I think most of these just have, yeah, there's actually two on the elevator, but it's on the outside hole already. That's where they recommend it because it's there. Um, you can take it out and put it to the inside hole, but you're probably gonna bind your rod on the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer. So just be, a, you don't want your rod bound. Camera crew, what was the, what hole on the elevator? Um, elevator, the One, two, third. Third hole up? Okay. So I think I'm gonna slide it in and see if we can twist the it. The third hole, yeah, from the yeah. outside. Okay, so that went on super easy. So I'm gonna actually hold this up vertical so that when we plug in the receiver, it doesn't bind up and like dig a hole in the side of the foam. Okay. So we'll just do that real quick. It's kind of resting on the vertical of the Phillips screwdriver there, mm. tip. Now, same thing here. I was talking about having two holes. There's two holes here. So you can actually take that ball joint out and go to the inside hole and get more control authority out of this, but you're not gonna need it, trust me. Then you would go to the outside of this first if you want more throw before you would adjust that. that. That's gonna be a lot more, by the way. You'll probably just overdrive the servo. Okay, these are big servos, but they're not like infinitely powerful. Okay, so what was it for the elevator? Um, or for the rudder, I mean? The second one in? Rudder. Yeah, second yep, one. Second okay, one. so let's show them what I'm doing. We're just gonna slide this in real quick. Just kind of brace behind it with your finger. Don't get stabbed, because that does hurt. And then rotate, you see how that's twisting? You wanna get it to walk in so it doesn't break this. That's a really strong surface control. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so now I'm gonna put that vertical too. That's just so it doesn't like go back and jab into something um, while I'm moving the sticks, uh, setting up things. Okay, so we don't need this Velcro. We can set that aside. We're down to three components on the counter. That's, that's a good sign. That means yep. we're basically ready to do radio setup. And radio setup is. You were gonna do CG. Oh, CG. Yeah. About. Oh, I lied. Sorry, guys. CG. We're gonna use our calipers. Who sent us the calipers again? Danny. Oh, Danny. Oh, yeah, Danny. Danny. We haven't been saying his name for like seven years yet. I know. So. We, stopped. we stopped annoying him for a while. It was a small reprieve. Okay, so we need 100 to 110? 90. Or 90 to 100? 90 to 100. Okay, so we just scroll it in on our digital calipers. Previous to this, we used the world's cheapest calipers, which were, I believe, free. And um, I used to use those. And they worked really nice, actually, because they were just, you know, whatever. It's close enough. Um, okay, so let's see if this is from the leading edge of the wing. It looks like, so just a note real quick, 
This wing has pretty much got very little sweep to it. It might actually have a slight forward sweep. No, it's pretty much even. So that makes it very easy to mark this. So we're just gonna hold that so that it kind of more or less marks along the leading edge. And we want to imagine a flat line at the widest part of the wing and a flat line here and then get that square. Just basically mark it where you can see. Now I'm gonna make a small mark and then I'm gonna have a small detent. I usually will pierce the foam because it works really nice. But this, this went really good, so I'll just do it that way. We already have that at the right position, so I can go ahead and flip it over here I can't see the reading. I wanna make it approximately the same spot, meaning from the center of the plane out, just so it's easy to balance. And you'll see that I'm kind of diving in the hole tip. And then what that's going to do for me is when I go in there to test my CG, I can feel for that bump. That works super nice. Okay, so we're going to go to 100, 100 on the calipers, yeah, plus or minus a couple thousandths of a millimeter is going to be close enough for what we're doing. There's a little bit of an estimation process on getting the alignment here. Okay. So then I'm just going to mark this. Very simple. And if in doubt, you can also measure 10 millimeters from your first hole if you're questioning positioning. Having trouble getting this one to lay flat, so I'm gonna have to do it this way. Okay, and then just so you guys know, on a 3D plane, it feels like those are closer than this. Did I screw that up somehow? They do look a little they bit. They look like this one's like a lot further apart. I'm just gonna take it and set it to 10 and then close enough, close enough. Yeah, that's a little bit further apart than I probably should have marked it, but that one's pretty close. So I'm just gonna cheat this one a little bit closer by opening the hole a little bit, whatever. It's close enough, close enough for what we're doing here. The idea is on CG markings, uh, it's always hard to measure on a regular surface. You don't want to damage the surface. It's foam. It's not going to be infinitely strong up against something that's metal and strong. It's even worse when you start going to a monocoat covered surface where you really don't want to poke that. All right, so CG test has to be done with simulated receiver location. And, oh, I don't want that to fall all the way down the plane. That would be kind of not so good. And then simulating the wires where they're gonna go, they're, they're gonna basically be here. Okay. Magnets, really strong. Okay. So you can see where those marks are. <clears throat> I keep interrupting myself when I go to finish this thought, but 3D planes, historically, you wanna fly them somewhat tail heavy. We also have two rods that aren't installed. No, they are installed. They are installed. Okay, but they're pointed down, so it's close enough. So right now, I'm on the front holes, see that? Mm -hmm. and it's balanced out nicely, which means that it's gonna fly uh, somewhat, I would say we're probably two thirds of the way back, or excuse me, one third of the way back between the front hole and the back holes. So typically on a maiden flight, it's nice to have the plane slightly more nose heavy because it's gonna be a little easier to control and fly. But since this is a 3D plane, you may be flying it with, the, with it a lot more tail heavy, okay? So that means you're gonna balance even, maybe even in front of those holes a little bit. So it's just wanting to, you know, allow you to get into this configuration better or do some high alpha, things like that. But my guess is it's already been designed into the CG marks that they provided. So we're fine there. Now what we do, not everybody's gonna do this. And it just kind of depends on what batteries you use and if you use the same batteries all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark right here. I feel satisfied with where that is. So I'm just gonna make a mark. I'm gonna draw a little arrow that indicates what direction the wires go. And I'm just gonna write what it is. It's a 2700, 2700 milliamp 4S, okay? And the reason we do that is because I will forget like mm -hmm. tomorrow, milliamp hour. And if you don't know what milliamp hour, it's the rate, uh, it's, it's a rate, it's like uh, miles per hour. It's, it is how uh, many milliamps per hour will discharge in a full hour, I think is how that's rated. So. The larger that number, the more you can fly before the battery dies or the more you consume. And then the uh, 4S has to do with how many volts the pack is because they're in series. So if you take 4.2 plus 4.2 in series, that becomes 8.4 plus 4.2 plus 4.2 becomes a 4S. 
Okay, so a 6S has more voltage. That means that you get more rotational speed, but then of course the, tor the torque and all that stuff is part of the calculation from the prop and all that good stuff. But the big thing is the voltage, that's what you guys need to deal with because you're gonna match up whatever the manufacturer recommendation is. And if you wanna get more power, typically you're gonna go for a higher uh, cell count, but you're not gonna generally go higher than the manufacturer requires or recommends because then you're gonna burn out your ESC and or your motor simultaneously many times. All right, so the next thing we have to do is actually get the radio setup done. So I think what we're gonna do is we are going to, basically we need to look at the vector documentation for just a minute because it's the first time we've done it. Uh, and then we'll come right back and we will share with you the exact process and you can follow along, especially if you just bought this from our link in the video description below, which helps us support our channel and pay for our family's life and particularly this part of it. And so we really appreciate it. If you do that, also it helps us to build clout with different companies that we work with like Eros, which is new to the channel. So we really appreciate you guys, Eros. Thanks for partnering up with Brian Phillips RC. We hope that you set us good planes so that you're happy with us. <laughs> and then also, uh, as you know, we work with a plethora of other companies. We'll have links below. We're not gonna necessarily mention them right this second, but they're down below. You can look for yourself. You'll be supporting us even if you buy something else that's on the links. But as a gesture to Eros, obviously we wanna show how awesome this plane is on this video. And that's what we're gonna do. And then as we get more planes from Eros, we'll show you and you guys can make up your own mind. So that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. We bring you the latest and greatest technology in RC, consumer grade RC, and we wanna help you to understand how to use it to its fullest potential. And we wanna help prevent one and dones. That's one of our biggest mission statements on the channel. If you get a plane that's not sized appropriately for your skills, you're gonna crash it and you're gonna quit. Welcome to the club of people that do one and dones. Now, if you've already been there and you've already quit and you're coming back and you're saying, you know what, I wanna give it another go. This is where you need to be. Stay here, we have literally thousands of videos. We're gonna help you get from where you are to where you wanna be. We do try to reply to 100% of our comments. It's getting harder and harder. But at this point, that's what we're trying to do for the near term. And uh, at some point in the future, we just won't be able to keep up. But right now, we're keeping up. So leave the comments in the video description below. I usually try to reply to them. And then if I reply and then there's another reply, I generally don't see them. I'm not trying to uh, you know, leave anybody hanging. Just make a new comment and I'll see it. So that being said, next up, radio setup. Stay tuned. All right, so we're going to do the Edge 540s radio setup. Uh, we're gonna use the NX8. So obviously the first process that we have to do is we have to get the transmitter turned on and we have to get the receiver to be wired up. We had just previously checked the CGs, so this wasn't even hooked up to anything. And just full disclosure, I couldn't figure out if there's SBUS support on this. I don't believe there is. I don't know why there would be and then not have anything listed, but maybe there is. If, I, if it's available and I don't know, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but please leave it in the comments below. There is one S bus plug. If you use S bus, it's a serial bus, so it's gonna tell all the different control surfaces what their status is through one plug, okay? But in this case, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be basically hooking up the different power through here. Now, if you wanna bind first before you actually run this, you'll have to unplug the throttle from the backside of the Eros vector system, okay? So I'm gonna plug throttle into the throttle port now this is labeled here, it's kind of hard to see, but it's raised minus plus S. So signal is S, and that's gonna be your orange one, red is power, and then brown is, is ground. Okay, so that's gonna go into port one of your receiver. Now this receiver is indifferent to its position right now. It does know it's spatial, it is spatially aware, but it doesn't do anything with it because there's no AS3X or stabilization or auto leveling through safe that's gonna actually be handled by the vector system today. So it's just basically gonna be for us an external stabilizer and auto leveling sequence. So what I've done is I've opened up and turned the radio on. We haven't bound this yet uh, for this profile. We have to build a new profile and then we'll bind it and then we'll land these wires. We're gonna do it in such a way that we're safe and we don't get cut by this and we're gonna do it in such a way that we remember to land our elevator and our rudder uh, linkages. So it should be a pretty straightforward process. So cam crew, if you want to come around here, we just did another plane as usual. So I'm going to click the cancel and back buttons and turn away for just a second. 
and then I'll scroll to add new model and then we'll create an acro. This is an acro. You could also do these other ones. Okay. So it's going to create a new model for us. It takes a couple seconds once you click on that. Okay. This is where you would go back to where we just came from. That's what we just set the model type. If you go in there and change it, it's going to clear everything. Model name. So this is where it's 65 colon space. And then if you look up there, we can see it's the edge 540 by arrows. So I'm going to type, this is a legacy keyboard. We've turned back to the legacy keyboard with updated firmware. There's a new keyboard. I don't like the new one. I'm using the old one. Okay. So we'll scroll this in and you guys can join up with us when we're done typing. Okay. So we have the edge 540, 1300 millimeter. Always put the size if you can fit it in there because you're going to end up with another 540 something and you're going to want it to be named. Okay, aircraft type, this is where you type up the, set up the wing type. So in a stabilized configuration, you almost always are gonna set up your standard wing type. Unless you have some sort of very super sophisticated stabilizer, which is uncommon in this arena. That plane actually is pretty close to that picture. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll just leave that the same. F mode set up. I don't know if we're gonna change any flight modes on this. We are gonna have a switch that's preferably a three position. And since we don't have flaps, we'll probably use this one so I can get to it easier. That's B. Ordinarily, I would use this for stabilizer off and safe or stabilizer on, stabilizer on safe or some variety of those if I have retracts and flaps. But because there's no flaps on this plane, I could use A, which is what I would ordinarily run, but I wanna be able to demonstrate all three functions of the vector. And the vector flight control gives three functions. Stability mode, which is like safe. It's gonna auto level the plane when you let go of the sticks. Dynamic mode, which is, uh, it's actually, yeah, that's, that's dynamic mode is like AS3X, okay? So it's gonna counter environmental impact like wind. Um, and then of course, direct mode, which is going to be for us off. Okay, so I'm not sure what direction I'm gonna set it up. I would like my far back position to be ordinary flight mode for me, so stabilization only. Then I'd like the middle to be probably off and then the far back to be safe because I, I want my switches in the same position all the time when I start a plane. And that's a good habit to make if you aren't already doing it. So in this case, I don't think we're gonna set up a flight mode. We don't need to. So that's gonna be tied to channel two so let's see what that is channel auxiliary two so that'd be oh auxiliary two is not going to be available so we have to set that to be here and then we'll set this to na or inhibit and auxiliary three we'll just go ahead and inhibit that too because we don't have that many channels we have a six channel receiver so we'll just let gear continue to work on a and we'll let auxiliary one be assigned to switch b tip up a little bit thank you thank you Okay, so then we'll just hit back. And the first thing we're gonna do is throttle cut. Okay, I'm gonna turn it to switch H, which is here. Once I've acknowledged that, I can test by moving the stick. You'll note that right here, it's down, even though the stick is up and it's not responsive. That's because throttle cuts on, throttle cuts off. You can see it jumps into life, okay? No matter what the position, shuts it down to zero. That's a safety feature that you should all be using. It's super easy, get used to it. Okay, then we're gonna go to timer. I don't know what to tell. I don't think I saw it. It said to use a timer, but. Let's set it to five. Let's set it to five for now. I'm sorry. One out active means that when I go over 25%, get down, Callie. Show the people what we're talking about. Get down, don't walk on the stove, goof. Get down. I think she's trying to get that fly. Oh, good. Well, she should get the fly then. Just not on the stove. So anything over 25 is gonna activate the timer. It's gonna count down from the pre-designated time. Then I want no warning at one minute. I want it to just be off. That's inhibit, I-N-H. Inhibit, 10 seconds to one. I want voice. I want a countdown with an expiration at tone of vibrate, and then one tone every one minute, okay? So we walk out of there, telemetry we're not gonna mess with. There is telemetry, believe it or not, on that little 620, 
but it's sort of useless if you ask me. I think we might have a receiver voltage telemetry. Oh. So, I don't know. By the way, that 620 can run as though with 3.5 volts. That's crazy. Okay, so then you could go into bind here, but we're going to do it the more conventional way. So, clear the timer. I'm going to power down the model. Okay, so the model, sh once, that, once that light goes off, you're good to go. So, throttle cuts on. All the switches are where we want them. And what we're going to do is we are going to now take a certain level of caution because we are leaving the prop on. The recommendation, of course, would be to take the prop off, but I'm a realist and I know that we're going to be using it with the prop on for much of its life. So I'm going to also take note of the fact that this plane is upside down. On ordinary circumstances, this plane needs to be set on its wheels and then powered. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is throttle going into the receiver. We have no controls for anything else, but throttle is throttle and throttle is hooked up through the vector receiver, which is strange, the vector uh, flight controller. It's very strange to me. I'm not sure why that is, but that's just the way it is. So I find it strange that the throttle is hooked up, but that doesn't really surprise me because we can pull power then from the BEC directly. I figured they would steal power from one of the other circuits because every one of those servo wires gives you BEC power. So anyway, it's just the way they've designed it, so we'll just leave it at that. So throttle's plugged into this. I'm not gonna even, well, I guess we could. Why don't we just land them? We can. Right, that's what I... Yeah, so we're gonna turn on the transmitter just so we can go to monitor. Monitor's gonna tell us that ailerons are on uh, channel two. So ailerons are right here. It's labeled really clear, aileron. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the brown goes down. So channel two, plug that in. Then it looks like elevator is the third channel. So elevator, brown is down. Okay. Sorry, I didn't think to do that earlier. Should have done that first. Four is rudder. Now this is kind of like a spectrum layout. So your transmitter may be a little bit different. And then this is S bus. So we're just not gonna be using that. So we can just kind of tuck that in here. So it's out of the way. And then at this point, really what I was hoping to do is just bind it and then I could close the cover. So what we're gonna do is we'll just let that hang down actually. Flip the plane over. And then the reason I have this situated this way is because I wanna have ready access to it in case the prop would start. I can control the plane. I always treat a plane like it's gonna be dangerous until I know it's not gonna be. So that means I wanna get myself in a safe spot. Throttle stick is down all the way on the transmitter, throttle cuts on, and I am going to test the throttle and put it back down to the bottom. I've just got my positive lead landed to the positive. Now these XT60s will receive an IC3, and that's what I'm using. So here we go, so we're gonna plug this in. After plugging it in, there should really be no activity other than the ESC chiming. Okay, I'm gonna hold the plane until I know. If you look at the transmitter, I'm gonna press the button, it starts flashing, okay? Camera crew, if you wouldn't mind holding a hand on this and filming that. I'm walking away. I'm walking away. Okay, so transmitter is currently off and I'm a long ways away. Look how far away I am. I'm pressing and holding this while holding the bind button. It says binding, now I can let go and just let it work. DSMX 22 milliseconds comes up, telemetry comes up. Okay, hold tight. Make sure everything is stationary and not going to cut anybody or anything. Okay, the constant beeping, that's normal. Okay, so throttle cut is off. This is the first time it's been turned on, so maybe we have to cycle throttle. Throttle's up, throttle's all the way down. Okay, so we're gonna be super careful the first time. All the way up, all the way down. Okay, now I'm not sure if that's normal, but I'm gonna power this down and power it back up. We are, we are formally bound, so if we're bound, then we can go ahead and basically just lay this in here. It doesn't need to be secured particularly. You can secure it if you want, but there's not really anything. We might need to see the LED on the... There's an LED that flashes for its status. Yeah. So we'll come back to it if we need to, okay. but that is a good point. Okay, so I wanna lay it on its feet. 
or its landing gear in this case. And we'll just set that down on hopefully not the radio this time. How did I manage to hit the radio? That was weird. Oh, it's the sticks. It's the controls. Okay, so I'm going to secure the plane and we're gonna try this again and see if the ESC uh, works. We may need to program the throttle range by putting the throttle all the way full with the throttle cut off and then back down. But before we establish that, I'm just gonna try it with the throttle down and throttle cut on like we would ordinarily start a plane for safety reasons. And since this is the first time I've done one, I wanna make sure I know. Okay, so just waiting for it to initiate. Okay. It's army. So count of one, two, three, four. That means that we have no braking on. It would go one, two, three, four, if it was braking. But it goes tone up, tone down, that means braking is off. Okay, throttle cut is off, and we have no movement of the prop until I move the throttle stick. Good, it's going forward. That's 25% throttle, 50. That's powerful. Throttle cut's back on and tested. When I say tested, I mean throttle cut is on, and I've tested that it's working. So now I have some level of confidence in this. I know that's gonna work to the degree that I can uh, function around the plane without worrying about safety. And as long as you have good habits at this point, then your good habits will help protect you unless something goes horribly wrong. And that can always happen, but I'm not gonna plan on it at this point. So now I have the plane upside down. Why do I have it upside down? Let's talk about that for a minute. The reason we have the plane upside down is because I need to get the surfaces centered. Now, why do we need to get the surfaces centered, camera crew? So that we can have, you don't have to make a bunch of mechanical or trim adjustments. Those are fast. Yeah. Wow. And that's a lot of movement. Okay. <laughs> so everything is moving. So I would, I would presume that these are centered. Pretty awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I want to center this. So how do we center it? We just brace this, usually two to three fingers and then twist two, three, and then we just get it to where it centers. That's obviously not far enough. So another half a turn, another half a turn. Getting nope. closer, probably two more or one more? Probably two more. One more, I think two. Mm-hmm. Camera crew is skilled on this. Ooh. Mm, overdid it, mm. overdid it, or it's in the middle. It's gonna be in the middle. Dang, that's a bummer. Yeah, it's just a little bit that way or it's a little bit this way. That's part of the nature of the beast on this type of clip. So now you can push those on by hand if you have like um, crazy man hands, but uh, I even don't though- I think you have your bowling pliers out. Oh, I don't, I have bowling pliers. Thanks, John, John, John got those for us. We're just getting all the- We're getting all the thank yous out tonight. all the tools. Yes, John actually, he got me these and uh, they have been somewhat helpful, especially when removing them. Yeah. So, so there's that. Line that up like that. Okay, so that goes in a lot easier and there's no pain and suffering. You can do it with needle nose pliers though, just so you know. Okay, rudder. Not even concerning myself with the direction of travel just yet. Okay, now the elevator. Same thing we need to do here. Need that to be level and true. As you can see, we're not where we need to be. You see, we need to bring that out. So I'm gonna take three fingers, brace it, and then walk this out. There's three half turns. How we look? Ooh. Nope, too Not much, quite. too much. Now, part of, the, part of the conflict you have with doing this is you have to do this without the stable. Is that still down? Did, still. I needed to go out, didn't I? Yeah, I think you went the wrong way. One, two, so there's two. Ooh, that's better. Uh, might Close. need another half, half out. Mmm, probably gonna have to go half. Okay, pretty good. It's as good as it's gonna get. Now, the coarseness of threads on these adjustments are to wanna, that's what's gonna dictate whether or not you need to take further action. Okay, guys. Okay, so that's snapped on. Thanks, John. That tool mm -hmm. just got basically a mechanism to help you pull them off too. And pulling them off is pretty terrible. Yeah. So if you don't have that tool, it's not very fun. Okay, elevator. Oh, everything's backward. So now we need to rotate the direction of travel. And so for this step, I wanna go back to regular flat and level. Be mindful that the prop could start 
but take the precautions so it doesn't. If you're concerned, take the prop off. Okay, so cam crew over here. That's correct, that's correct. Pretty good resolution. There's a little bit of jumpiness in there, but it feels good. Okay, roll left, roll right, elevator up. Okay, so that's backward. Servo set up, travel, reverse, elevator. Up, down. That is Roll left, crazy. roll right, yaw left, yaw right. And it's fast. Yeah. So let's see how that works now. Because we were rotated the direction of travel, that may cause some problems for the stabilizer. And so we need to be paying attention to that. So the next thing we need to do is, I'm just thinking about this. You know how we set up throttle and all that stuff? You know how there's an S-Bus? We never actually hooked anything up that did signal. So we probably have to take the S-Bus cable out and switch it around. Because oh. otherwise it won't know what mode we're in. Because I was just gonna say that, how would it know what mode we're in? Oh. Because we I, never actually landed a wire for auxiliary, auxiliary one in this case, which would be our gear channel, hmm. okay? Or did it say gear and I just missed it? Let's check. So folks, if you're new to Brent Phillips RC, this is what we do. We show you how to go through this process, setting up new planes. Okay, so we're in one mode. I'm just gonna change them. It's not gonna change anything because it has no way of knowing. Right. It's not hooked up to it. Okay, how do we know it's not hooked up to it? Because we didn't actually land a wire. So maybe the S bus has become, become our mode plug. What else does it say? I don't know. Oh, mode, it's both. <sighs> Camera crew. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So now, woo, oh. so this is where you wanna be careful because like I said, it did go ahead and switch modes as soon as we did that because pulse width modulation put that in a different circumstance than it had otherwise been. So in the absence of signal, it makes a decision to go to nothing. But with signal, then it's gonna go where you tell it. Now, since there is a push button, programming button, for or bind button, I'm gonna actually push this receiver down in here. Do you see this? See how I did that? I just pushed it down in there and it actually fits perfect. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm sure somebody thought through that and did that without me asking. Now, this, this is auto leveling. Yep. How do I know? It's quickest trying route. to find the quickest route to level. And then look at this. Now elevator, watch this. It's trying to bring the plane to a level attitude. This is attitude. This is roll. This is also known as pitch. And this is still known as roll. And then this is yaw. Now I don't think there's any yaw control for auto leveling. Oh, it does look like it might be auto leveling. Yeah, no, that's stabilization. Okay, so that being said, the next step for us is gonna be to check the modes. This plane looks sweet. I'm mm -hmm. excited to try this. All right, so we have everything going in the right direction on our controls. Okay, you'll note that there's less control authority there. See, it's gonna limit that. It's gonna limit that. Now it's not gonna limit that. And then this is nothing. And I think I can tell, listen. That's stabilized, how can I tell? I'm gonna lift up the tail quickly and I'm gonna look for that elevator to go up. Up, down. Okay, now rudder toward the camera crew and toward me, yep. And then elevator up, elevator down, yep. For good measure, down, up. So all I'm doing is I'm siding down the length of the control surface. Let's see if we can show them this. As I lift this side up, it's gonna counter by rolling the ailerons. Up, down. It's subtle, but you can see it. Now, let's look at the tail. When I roll this plane, that thing's gonna go up to counter. Okay, I'm gonna go down real low, so I got a long ways to go. See, up, down. Just a subtle movement, okay? Could you see that? No? And then the elevator, same thing. I'm gonna to try to go a little bit more pitchy. You'll note that that elevator goes up, up, down, up, down. You have to test that every time, okay? When I say every time, I mean every time you initiate this thing, you wanna test to make sure it's going the right direction. Now the cool thing is we switch the direction of output on our receiver so that that elevator goes up and we pull down on the stick, that's what we want. When I push down, it goes down. When I roll left, 
it rolls left. When I roll right, it rolls right. And the correction factor is also correct. We didn't have to set that up. We didn't have to program it. We didn't have to set up the gains, nothing like that. It'd be very nice to know if there is a gain adjustment available on this. Did they mention anything about that? I did not see anything about that. I don't see it at all either. Oh, that's in Chinese, okay. So you can also look here. So I don't know, that doesn't really even apply here. So, all right, we have yaw, we have elevator for pitch and we have roll. So everything is set up on this plane. Now I need to figure out a way to safely test how much throttle we have on this thing, how much power we have. So let's go to the living room and try it. Oh good, our lazy slob cats will be thrilled. That's all right. <laughs> they don't pay the bills. <laughs> okay, so you safe? Yep. Okay, so I'm in stabilized. Okay, so throttle. That's 50%, 60, 65%. Okay, throttle cuts on and tested. We're gonna have some power on this thing. <laughs> That's pretty good, I like that. So that means for us that we're gonna be able to do 3D, we're gonna be able to hover this thing. I could probably hover it in here. It seemed like it'd be easy to fly. So I'm super excited to share that part with you and I always love being able to float those planes in here. It's so cool. But anyway, let's talk about the different switch conditions because we do have it wrong. Okay, mm -hmm. now if we scroll to monitor mode, you can see that there's switch conditions on auxiliary one. This is stabilized. This one's auto leveling. Now, how do we know that's auto leveling? Because you can tell when you move the plane, it doesn't just move to respond, it tries to auto level. Okay, so that's in the opposite condition I'd like it to be. Also, I don't intend to fly in off condition much, but this is the off condition, okay? So that's 0%, safe is 100%, or auto leveling is 100%. So in fact, I'll just write this down so it's easy to remember. So auto leveling, that's 100 plus 100. Uh, zero is, that's nothing, right? Off, yeah, or direct. Zero is off. Okay, and then minus 100, see how it says minus 100 here? That's gonna be the uh, stabilization. Okay. So what I need to do now is I want to change my digital switch settings. You can do this with mixes if you like working hard, or you can do it the easy way. Click, scroll down to digital switch setup, select the switch. Now I want this position to be stab, so minus 100. Whoops. My scroller's been kind of acting funny. I wonder if I get a big blob of spit in there or something from talking Probably. too much. Might have got rained on. Okay, so minus 100. Then this one, zero is actually okay to be off. And then I want this one to be, want this one to be auto leveling, so plus 100. Okay, so instead of minus 100, I have to scroll all the way to plus 100. Now you'll note that this is changing the condition of that live and in person. If you don't want it to change while you're changing it, put it into another position that's already been preset, okay? See how it's changing live? So this is gonna be plus 100. Now there may be some value, there may be some value in that receiver, excuse me, in that flight controller, where you could go from zero to 100 to 125, and you might have a higher gain output. Let's test that right now. Okay, so currently I'm in safe for auto leveling. Now I'm in my stabilization. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this and make a factor by grabbing the tail of the plane. I'm moving it, now I'm gonna click into this, this variable, minus 100. I don't hear anything different. I don't either. Okay. So I drove it all the way up to minus 150, 150% and I didn't see anything change. I was hoping there might be some gain adjustability there. That'd be cool. Because hmm. my thought was at zero, 
you could have also, I could have also just rotated that switch and <laughs> a lot easier. I was gonna ask if you could have just flipped. Well, do you want me to show you how to do that, switch. guys, so it's easier? Well. Because this way you can actually set it to any position you want. So like you could have, like I wanted safe here, and all, here, go up a little bit, there you go. I wanted safe, I wanted safe here, I wanted auto leveling um, and stabilization off here, which I probably won't use that. And then I wanted um, AS3X sort of emulation right. for stabilization here, okay? So then it's it mimics closely what we're used to. If you just reversed it, it would be reversed. So if you wanted to actually change the order, you'd have to do it yeah, here yeah. So like you could switch. You could set this one to be off. You, you could want. set that to be off and you could set this to be 100. Yeah. Okay? So then depending on where you put it, that's what you would get. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So my apologies for taking a slightly uh, longer approach on that step, but I show it because a lot of times we set up, you know, like switch G for thrust reverse. And so we need it to be like plus 100, minus 100, minus 100. So it works really well for that. All right, so this plane is completely set up. That was very painless. What was that, a couple hours worth of work for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks really nice. I'm super excited to see it fly. Uh, one other thing too is we don't have any telemetry for voltage um, for the pack on this setup. Oh. But we do have a receiver voltage, which is really nice. And we do have signal voltage, which is pretty cool. I'm curious. Let me try something real quick here. I want to go on the other side of the wall. Oh, that's cool. So you can see the amplitude of your signal. Oh. So I can see if it's getting stronger or weaker. Like it's really, really strong there. We're minus 10 and then it's like minus 22. That's, that's cool. I've never noticed that before. Hey, um, before you wrap up, we're at 15% on battery, but you didn't set up dual rates in Expo. Oh, we better do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So now this is a 3D plane. So we do this different than typical. Yep. Okay. And this won't take long folks. So we're going to click, go into dual rates in Expo. I make my assignments for aileron to switch F, which is up here. Okay, and all of them actually. Now, because this is a 3D plane, that's gonna be zero. And then I'm gonna set this, oh geez, 100. How about we don't do 100? That'd be just a little bit more than we normally do. Let's do 10, and then we're gonna go real aggressive on this. Not 100. Gosh, that thing is being weird. Let's do 30 and drop the weights down to like 75. You guys saw how aggressive those throws were. Okay, so this is gonna be where we don't expect to fly, maybe if we're doing uh, 3D. And by the way, you can run negative expo as well. And it will actually be more crazy, okay? So we're gonna leave that at zero by default. We're gonna do 10 and then 30. We do have a stabilizer, so we can probably be safe at uh, 10. And then if, if not, we've got this one to get us to the ground, okay? So the idea is you start in the middle, you fly, if it's too much stabilization or too much uh, expo, you can go to nothing. Or if it's not enough, you can get some more to get to the ground, right? I always prefer to use Expo before I use rates, just so you guys know. I don't even read the manual for this step because this is so highly subjective. And if you guys ask the way that I'm gonna set up my plane, this is, this is not necessarily the way I would do it because it's a 3D plane, 3D planes we do a little bit different. Normally I would do like 5, 10, 20, and then I would drop the highest setting uh, down to like 90%. So there's 30, except in this case, we're going to 75. That's just because the extreme amount of throw. Okay, so now let's show them on the plane what it looks like. So the way we're gonna start, so this is default. This is just normal and I'm in stabilized mode. So we have full throw up. <laughs> then we have same, same thing, but then we drop down, okay? Same thing, in fact, I'll just go this way and I'll move the rudder, okay? So you can see it drops down quite a bit, a lot less to row, 25% less to be specific, okay? Then if your sticks are at like 30%, watch what happens when I go to the middle setting. See nothing, then a little bit, then way more. You guys see that? So we start in the middle, and then when we get ready to fly, we can make our adjustments and that helps you to have success flying this plane. That doesn't mean that you're gonna know how to fly because of that. 
And this plane, I would say, is probably not a beginner plane, even though this might be marketed to beginners. I don't think it would be a good beginner plane. And I can tell you that, having not even flown it, because I can tell how much the controls are, that's way more, and it's like all the things that you don't want to do as a beginner. Mm -hmm. That being said, depending on how good it flies, we'll give you some input on that shortly. And if we could just get Mother Nature to cooperate by not like being dark right now, then we'd be flying this thing right now. And it does look really good. Mm -hmm. Super excited. This thing is exactly right up our alley. Even though I don't do a lot of 3D, this thing went together really well. It was an easy build, easy radio setup, inexpensive radio. We use an expensive battery, we wouldn't have to. Um, but that being said, we're gonna get good flight times out of that thing, I bet. And we'll probably just use a voltage alarm the first couple of times and see what it is, or maybe pull out the XBC battery checker and test the battery after our first five, see if we've got more to go, and then we can establish our time. Should be pretty easy. Um, also, in a 3D environment, you know, you're gonna be flying one flight really hard, and then the next flight you might be doing just sport flying, going around, doing figure eights and things like this, or flying upside down, um, getting more efficiency out of the plane. So don't plan on the timer being super effective on a 3D environment, just a FYI. Um, similar to with jets, you know, sometimes you're doing aerobatics and sometimes you're just kind of doing circuits for takeoffs and landings. Um, same thing is true here. Very excited for this. Excited to be working with Aeros. Thanks for partnering up with Brian Phillips RC. We appreciate you. And we hope we've got many, many more good reviews coming for Aeros. They make some good stuff. And if, if the other planes are as good as this, we're very happy. So stay tuned. We're going to be reviewing more. In fact, we've got another one sitting here waiting for you right now but we can only get so much done in one weekend. And this last week was a doozy. So stay tuned, so much coming. In fact, our last video, it was six hours, over six hours. So for all of you guys that are serving time in the penitentiary, You're we welcome. expect you to watch the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, we get it. <laughs> so you know how to do it. Support us, buy the stuff from the links below. You'll help us with small commissions and we have PayPal and Patreon if you don't like to buy this plane. There's also more planes below, and that's how we fund this channel. There's a lot of work that goes into it, and then what you see, multiply that by at least 50, 60. No, I'm just kidding, it's not quite that bad. <laughs> Maybe four or five times what you see on an average video just to get these things to market for you to enjoy. And then also there's a lot of input before we even get this stuff in the pipeline to get in line to be reviewed, so it's, actually a lot of work and I'm super happy that my camera crew is faithfully available to help do this and our family tolerates it so well. So I love it, she tolerates it and I am a lucky guy. Come back for more, thanks for watching.